and says Derek. And we've got a few things on tap for this evening. First of all, one of the things we have on tap for this evening is basketball. I do plan to have, at least in the background, the, uh, the Colorado game, the play-in game, the last play-in game before the tournament starts tomorrow. So that's one of the things I plan to be doing. I have some food in the microwave I'm going to eat in a little bit. That's an important part of my evening's tasks. And I'm also going to be opening another couple of boxes that I have in there. We're removing the smaller boxes within them and breaking down the boxes and putting them in the trash. So I've got, I've got a number of exciting things on tap for tonight. Chores, basketball, and of course, live streaming. First I'll go pee. I think I'm going to take a couple of time out too. Hi, Bubbles. What a silly boy you are. Yes, you have the spirit of boyhood in your heart. Yes, you do. You have the spirit of boyhood in your heart. Hello, looks like Daniel Berry Sports Highlights. Welcome. We're just getting started. We're off to a bit of a slow start here. Probably should have gone to the bathroom before I started this stream, but it's all right. I'm no more perfect than anyone, you know. Yes, that's true. I make mistakes too. I'm just a regular human being after all. Well, my poops these days are really uh, shaking things up. It's like, I can't quite tell what's going on with my poops right now. If I am basically out of poops, or if there's still another chunk of poop stuck up in my butt somewhere. But I have pooped quite a bit of poops today, so it's very plausible that I don't have any poops left in me. Currently, it's not implausible. Alright, let's go take our food here that I microwaved and eat it with a spoon. setting a new standard for success because I've got food in the mix now. I've got a bottle of water for healthful beverage purposes. <coughs> now I'm trying to take care of myself here because I am still a little bit sick. And now we're going to open up here on the big screen, the live stream. Look at that, the little 
all the stuff. Wow. Yeah, I got another, at least one more box. Maybe more than more, one more to open. And break down the box. Raymond Cox, hello. Ethan, hello. Ruben R, hello. Maniac Monkey. What makes you think Maniac Monkey is going to bait me into saying things that will cause me trouble? I don't feel especially baitable in that fashion, but it's not, you know, I can be baited. Probably not into saying things that are going to get me in trouble. Maybe into being mad and scolding somebody a lot. How have we been? We have been fine. Yeah, yeah Rachel and I are here. Uh, we low stromed earlier, and uh, that was nice. And then took a break from live streaming for an hour or two, a few hours, maybe a couple hours. I don't know. Watched some basketball. I uh, filled out some brackets, and um, I additionally, what do you call it? Oh, cool. Fair enough. Fair enough. I didn't even see the deleted comment because I guess I got here too late for it to still be showing up as deleted. Yeah, I can say Bombaclat. I almost titled this video This Old Man is Skibbity Bombaclat. But instead, I just sat stuck with. Uh, I can guess, probably. Is it something about one's knee? I see. Are the turds out tonight? I mean, there's always a certain percentage of, of turd out, you know? It's like, you're never gonna get a Jack in the Box sandwich without some amount of rat shit in it. Mm. It's just a matter of whether it's it's thicker and impacting the taste more or not. This is called Mexican casserole. Jason L is banned. Who's Jason L? Oh, there you are, Jason L. I see you. I'm eating Mexican casserole. It's basically just like a deconstructed burrito. You know, it's got tortillas and beans and meat and corn and stuff in it. Mm. Well, it's more viscous than soup. Well, obviously you're not banned because I can see you stay, stay streaming. You're not banned either, Jason Al, because I can see you too. Nobody banned you. No, Tokyo also said Ruben R was banned. What? No, Tokyo is just screwing with you guys, okay? He doesn't have any capacity to ban or unban. Or unban, so don't listen to him. Am I Muslim? No, I'm not Muslim, obviously. I prefer a religion that has fewer completely arbitrary requirements. Yes, Bennett Cheese Crackers, I am your grandfather. I'm your skibbity bomba clack grandfather. Uh oh. Can you get down? <clears throat> How are you, UNC overthrow cheeks for the Rizzler? Who's UNC? Oh, Unk, right, that's me. Yeah, I throw cheeks for the Rizzler periodically. Seems like these days people will ask me that so often that I I do that like every day. She's right there. Hi. Win, Uncle. 
All right, no, it's okay, fine. Give it to you too. Give it to a lot of other people, might as well give it to you too. Here it is. Don't blink, it comes fast. Yeah! It's the best part of my day. <laughs> yeah. Now, if that's not Riz, I don't know what is. Yeah, like, yeah, sure. Normally, down at the strip club, people have to put a hundred in my pant waistband for me to do that. I'm not a cheap stripper, you know. Uh, you can pay me to star in your new film. No guarantee that I will star in it. Depends what kind of um, film it is, I suppose. Can you date my wife? No. Did I raise my wife for that slick move? No. Um, but he raises my life now with it. Yeah, no. But that wasn't how I got her originally, no. I had other Riz tactical moves. You know, like I said to her, I'm like, Hey girl, you know you my world. And she was like, oh. she melted. Yeah. Cause I figured if it worked, it, it made Michael Jackson so sexy, it's gonna make me sexy too. I'm pretty sure Richard's going that the the uh, market for foot pictures is much smaller than advertised. Yeah, I went with the Christian Riz. I can't turn water into wine, but I'm trying to make you mine. <coughs> you must be Jesus, girl, because below my belt is rising from the dead. How about that? Okay, well, that's interesting interpretation, Birdo. Um, yeah. Yeah, you can say a pickup line without getting kicked out. Okay. I tell you what, I can promise you for this time, I will. the worst I will do is time you out. Bomba clap. Hey girl, you want to get away from these skibbity bomba clats? Smash them, my Rari? How's that? That's how I slay. Thanksgiving on one leg and Christmas on one leg. I will meet you in the middle. Hey girl. I got Thanksgiving on one leg and Christmas on the other. You want to meet me in the middle? I understand why it's Thanksgiving and Christmas. What's my education background? Uh, I got a... Well, first I started off in preschool. Then I did the whole kindergarten thing, you know. Then I did first, second grade at that same school with kindergarten. Then... Third, four, five, six, I did at Hugo Reed Elementary School, the other Hugo Reed Elementary School, the big school, as we called it. Then for middle school, I went to Foothills Middle School and uh, in Arcadia, and I was there for grades seven, eight, and nine. For high school, I went to Arcadia High School. I went there for grades 10, 11, and 12. Then I went to UC Santa Cruz to get a bachelor's degree in American literature. Because I figured the world needs somebody with those skills, you know. And then I 
spent some time in a teaching credential program that I never finished. I ended up being a debate coach, professional debate coach in the end. Uh, but I did spend some time of my career as an English teacher. How old is my wife? Yes, that's her next to me. She's 39. I'm 52. You know what I was thinking? I was thinking that it's it might be good to go up to a girl and be like, are you Barbara? And she'll be like, no, that's not a name. And then you could be like, oh, what is your name? That's a good idea. You know, is your name Barbara? <laughs> she'll be like, what? Barbara. No. Oh, well, what is your name? Yeah. It's Even not you know Bravara. It's, <laughs> yeah, it's not. It's not going to be <laughs> Bravara at all. Like, is your name Persniffany? <laughs> Persniffany. If it's not Persniffany, is it Bravara? <laughs> yes. It just makes me think of the Flight of the Concords. Yeah, right. Ethan, is it a little weird? No, it's completely natural, actually. I think that's a perfectly reasonable question, Xavier Rodriguez. I don't think he's picking on us or Rachel or anything. He's curious because we do have an age gap. It's 13 years. Yeah. Um, And he's wondering if it's a little weird. Actually, it's not at all. Uh, I could imagine it would be if the gap were larger, maybe. Yeah. But um, the thing is, Rachel's an old... Millennial, I'm a Generation X, and I would say I'm a very youthful Generation X type person. Yeah, you are. In terms, maybe not in terms of my appearance, but in terms of my tastes and my interests and stuff. You know, like currently, my favorite rapper is Baby No Money. You know, I, I, he's my favorite rapper right now too but i find that i like his raps best when they're not about like yeah yeah chicks you yeah, know like yeah. banging chicks yeah. and i get that this part of the culture but i like his he's not his, nearly as bad about it as other people are uh, but i prefer when he's not when he's not playing like yeah because i don't think he has to i don't think he really is really authentic to him either it's not all I ever want to do is talk, 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 talk. Your guy's an ENTP. Yeah, he is. So, you know, the bottom line also is because I've been always, like, at the forefront of digitalization ever since I got my first Apple II computer, you know, way back in the day, I'm more like a digital native than most people my age. Because I was kind of techy early on, right? Like, I, I used to, like, program things on the Apple II. Just simple little things. But um, I had an early, for my generation, early experience with with digital stuff. But additionally, it's just my personality type. I'm... I'm interested very much in novelty, things that are new, things that are, but also in relevance. I want things that are what's great right now. You know, I also enjoy things that are timeless, sure, but you know, I just love media. I love good media of all kinds. I love great anime. Like I'm as current as you could possibly be in terms of anime culture, because um, I have, I watch the things as they come out every day on Crunchyroll. I watch all the new shows that I like, which are all the good ones. Can you ready this for me? Please, before I go, ready what? I don't know what that means. Yeah, Sin City, City Chris, I am not a touching uncle. That's true. I've never faced any accusations from anybody in that area, you know, like uh, inappropriate touching or being creepy and like bugging 
women that don't want to be bugged. So far, I, I've always erred very much on the side of caution with that stuff. So I've never faced any of those kind of accusations. Um, I'm just not a super physical person is another way to think of it. It's like I spend my energy and attention doing this kind of thing, talking. So that's maybe worth noting. All right, well, let's go get another box since the Population in the stream is steady, 12, not much going on in the chat. Let me go get another box so we can get something done here. Uh, I need to open it up and then cut down the box and throw it into the trash can. I don't want to fill up all of our trash with chopped up cardboard boxes, you know, so I have to chop it up pretty small in order to prevent that from happening. Here's the box. But I'm gonna, you know what? Fuck that. Don't do that, Eric. Why are you doing it the dumb way? Just pick it up. And let's go. All right. Here we go. Got another box in here. I'm ready to chop it up. I'm not smoking a cigarette. I'm just holding one. If people really want me to quit smoking cigarettes, they should want me to be holding it and not smoking it. Because that's a conceivable way I could at least cut down dramatically on smoking. It probably will. Is to continue to have cigarettes, just carry them between my fingers and not smoke them, put them on my lips but unlit, stuff like that. All right. We've got a fly swatter for the other house. Yeah, two. We've got another one of these floor lamps. Makes three, I'd say. And another one, four. I'm not even sure where we're gonna put all these four lamps, but if we find a spot for all of them in the other house, I've got a couple spots around here we can put one. We have a light bulb. Oh, and there should be like six or something in there. We have measuring cups. I mean, there's only one light bulb in here. Oh, there is? Yeah, but it might be coming in a different box. First oh. aid kit for the house. And oven mitts. And there's some oven mitts in there that we can use for here. Cool. Now I'm going to chop this box down. more manageable size pieces. Starting with this, and then we'll just yeah, like so. Yeah, like so. Yeah. Yeah. And then Nobody's asking her any questions or anything, so she's not an NE dom. She doesn't just come up with random shit to uh, say all the time. I'm, I'm, right now I'm looking up Chinese astrology stuff. Um, I'm looking up specifically Bazai charts, and I'm looking up everyone, everyone in my family, plus, uh, just 
Oh yeah, everyone in my family. Yeah. This chart, because I want to know the day that they're. Because according to Fly Guy, you're the day of your birthday in Bazai Chinese astrology is the most important. So, does anybody have any questions for Rachel? Would yeah. you like to hear her opinion about anything in particular? Yeah. I'm an INFJ, so if you have any questions about INFJs. Yeah. She's also a displaced New Yorker, New Yorker expat. She's also um, a Californian. She's also a wife. Sure. Blue Elvis, I'll look you up. Blue Elvis Draw. Um, what year? February 16th. February 16th. Okay, I was just going to say 22, 81. Cool. Like nineteen twenty two, like how? <laughs> That's not true. You're the same age as my second wife, Blue Elvis Draw. She was born in eighty one. And I have to ask, um, because it's different for if you're male or female. Are you male or female, Blue Elvis Draw? Hmm. I can say happy birthday to you, but I'm not going to say that. Cash cart, happy birthday. Yeah, happy birthday. Happy birthday, cash cart. Mail, okay. Bazaar. Okay, so the hour that you were born. Oh, shit. Hour should be unknown. Do you know the hour that you were born? If not, that's fine. I can do it without your the hour that you were born. I know this is a lot of personal information. 8 a.m. Exactly 8 a.m.? I was born on Wednesday, and they say Wednesday, <coughs> this child is full of woe. Isn't that fun? 806, okay. What a lot of people don't realize is they mean that Wednesday's child is full of woe. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Joey it's, Lawrence style. That's yeah. a lot better than W-O-E. Okay, so the hour that you were born is the dragon. So that's your... I. I Fly Guy knows better what it actually means, but the hour that you were born was the hour of the dragon. The day that you were born, which is the 16th of February, is Ox. The month that you were born is Tiger, and the year is Rooster. Mm. So, from what I've learned from Fly Guy is that... Um, the day that you were born represents you. So the important one to remember is that you're an earth ox. You're an earth and ox, an earth and ox. Don't be afraid to catch small pox. So now we have the chat up and the basketball game. What more could anyone want from life than those two things? You're welcome. Uh, Poop face. You just called Blue Elvis a poop face. Oh, I'm sorry. My bad. That was an accident. Um, I can read you a little bit about the Earth Ox if you'd like. 
Do you remember being born, Blue Elf Straw? You think that's uh, impressive? I remember being conceived. No, she's not single, Batman. Boy, no, I'm what, not single. Is this what happens when a woman live streams? <laughs> Okay. She's my wife, okay, my man? Go save the damn Gotham from crime or something. Earth Ox overview. Let's think about the picture that the G Chow presents for a minute. Winter comes to an end. The snows are receding. While the patches of white snow still lies on the ground, most have been absorbed into the oil. Rich in resources, the hidden minerals in the soil represents your creativity that must be honed so that your results will grow and flourish. In other words, the land needs to be tilled. This is the resource resourcefulness of the G Chow pillar, which is the earth ox. Fair enough, Batman. You just saw her on camera here. No way for you to know either way. It's totally fair. I don't mean to bust your chops. Don't worry about it. Do you remember being conceived too? I remember being conceived of before it was even conceived. Our I'm... cat has cat AIDS, Amor Horovic. You have snake AIDS? Our cat has cat AIDS. It's more impressive that you have snake AIDS because you're not a snake. Yeah. You want Luminix too? Um, I'm sorry, Lou, but both those ratios reduce to one eight and one over seven, respectively. Please reduce your fractions. Oh, wait, you mean those are dates? Bum, 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 bum. AIDS was made by the government. With AIDS made by the government. <laughs> All right. I somehow doubt that. I have sharp photo memory and I also remember being conceived. I still remember how it looked in the womb. Oh, wow. <laughs> wow! Batman! But my point is, I got you beat because I remember my parents speculating about my wow. potential existence before I was even conceived. Wow. So that's a really good memory. Um... So I'm looking up, I was looking up my people that I know, Bazai Chinese astrology chart. So like with the chart, I can find out because like Fly Guy says that the day that you were born in Chinese astrology represents you. So it's more important than the year that you were born. So I could just give you some like, you know, esoteric information. Howdy, Chad Linton. How do you do? My name is Eric, and I am Pooh. Um, I'm watching this Colorado Boise State game, which is so far off to a cold shooting start, but I'm sure it'll it'll heat up. You know. You're welcome. I could read more about your t your type. Um, what does it say? Earth Ox. From a technical point of view, the Earth Ox sits on your own G Earth companion star, which imparts a high degree of confidence, independence, and the predisposition to work well with others. Easy going by nature, the, G the Earth Ox is an eager and optimistic participant of life. You believe that life must be lived to the fullest. Do you, does that resonate for you at all? I believe it's unsafe to live life to the fullest. You should only live you should only live it to the fill line, which is about three quarters of the way up. Um I do just need the date of birth, but if you want more information, you could get um I would need your the time of birth. But if you don't wanna if you don't Mm -hmm. Heidi Ibrahimi, my cough is not all the way gone if you're talking about my cough. If you're talking about your own cough, well, congratulations. 
1975, right? So February 14th. January 26th, 1988. So you're three years younger than Rachel, almost exactly. I'll do yours uh, next, Chad Linton. I'm looking up um, Luminix's right now, which I'm going to put her birthday as, I'm um, being birth time as unknown uh, female. Oh, 345, 54, 354. What an inconvenient time to be born, then. Huh? Okay, so, oh my gosh, um, all right, so your hour, the hour that you're born is the wood tiger. Your day is the wood rabbit. Your month is the wood tiger and your year is the wood rabbit. So you have double tiger and double rabbit. I also am a wood rabbit, Lou, which is funny. Because we're both INFJs also. Yeah. Yeah, so your hour is tiger, wood tiger. Your day, wood rabbit. Month, wood tiger. Here, wood rabbit. Um... I could read a little bit about the wood rabbit for you. Wood rabbit. Uh, day master. Wood rabbit, pretty as a flower, the wood rabbit day masters are generally blessed with a certain degree of physical attractiveness. But this, in the case of the wood rabbit or, uh, yeah, or ye mao, the striking ye wood is literally sitting on a peach blossom star. The rabbit or the mao branch is one of the four Bazai peach blossom stars. What does it mean exactly? Likeability times a hundred. Grace with pleasant, agreeable personality, you, the wood rabbit, day master, is usually found at the center of a crowd, just like that field of flowers usually, usually surrounded by people. Um, wood rabbit day masters are typically sociable, good-natured, and well-liked. This trait is further amplified in the wood rabbit pillar, which sits on the thriving stage with the 12 growth phases. I don't know what that means. You're the ultimate networker. You enjoy working, playing, and living cooperatively with others. And best of all, you carry a warm convi convivial atmosphere with you wherever you go. Being with you is just, well, nice. Yeah, I was kind of thinking where are two zins? What? Where are two zins? I just packed two zins. I don't know. I don't know either. Yeah, we're bunny buddies. I'm just a lowly pig. Do you find though, Lou, when you go out, like that you're like, like people are excited to be around you and that you're there and that like, it's kind of like a thing. I mean, you do have a book club and stuff. You're you're more social than I am. Hi, Apple Peel. Good day to you as well. A A A A says, "Is he okay? Haven't visited in weeks. Tell him Tampa Baker is getting help from FBI." 
There he is. Okay. Not sure really what you're talking about, but that's fine. I point out foremost that is he okay is a question. No, that is my wife. I do have a daughter. She's 25, lives in Los Angeles. My wife is 39. Oh, Not yes, the mother of my daughter. Yes, you're next. I'm sorry. Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you. Already. I interrupted you, not you interrupted you. That was me. Oh. 1988. Okay, so 1988. Fine. People ask that question all the time. 4.20 a.m. She's 50, I'm 52, she's 39. January 26th. I'm a January baby, too. January 26, 1988, 420 a.m. That's a good time to be born, Chad. Yeah, it is. 420. You were born at the pot smoking hour. And male, so. Traveling. Hi, Ireland Caballero. Okay, so the hour of the birth that you were born in is Wood Tiger. Day is Earth Dragon. Month is Earth Ox. And the year is not right. Oh, no, it is right. The year is right. You're a rabbit, Wood Rabbit. So you're also an Aquarius rabbit like Lou. Um... I could read about the Earth Dragon for you. Apple peel, that makes you like most people, I suspect. I I have been told many times by the time I was born, I still don't remember. 129. 129. My daughter, I know when she was born approximately, she was born between 5 and 7 p.m. On a weekday afternoon of some, I don't remember which day of the week it was. You're half rabbit, half tiger, and half dragon. That's right, Chad Linton. You're 150% of a person. You have ox in there, too. Okay, so... Earth dragon. So what's so special about this day, Master? Well, not a true... Fu Gong or Bright Star Pillar, I don't know what those mean. The nobility of the Earth Dragon puts it right up there with the special four. Especially these pillars represent hardy, multi-talented, and very capable individuals. The Earth Dragon is nicer, though. Benign, but tough. In the case of the Earth, the Earth Dragon, what does hard... Hardiness mean it means that in spite of all of its niceness this pillar which is rooted in the branch possesses extraordinary deter extraordinary determination and is able to withstand a lot of pain in order to triumph against adversities Wow good for you. You know that this word chimera is how it's pronounced C-H-I-M-E-R-A I first encountered Chimera as a word when I was playing Dungeons and Dragons as a child, but none of us had ever heard the word said before. I thought it was Chimera all the way until I heard it a few times in different anime that it's actually Chimera. Chimera. But the thing is, um, I must have heard it in English cartoons too, because Japanese might even pronounce it that way, but I wouldn't have concluded that I was mispronouncing it. So I, I know, though, that I was mispronouncing it. It is Chimera. I'm not, I can't exactly say where I learned that information, though. Prior to, the, prior to me hearing it in some cartoon at some point, I thought it was Chimera. Just like for a long time, because I only read the word and never heard it before, I thought that bodice was pronounced bodice. I can understand that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna I'm looking up Eric's right now. He is a horse, I know that. 
Um, but I don't know what kind. <clears throat> Hanawan Range Bender asks, Rachel, do you believe in Chinese Zodiac? Um... I think it's fun. I I don't know. It's Rachel I, doesn't put too much weight into any of these things, but she puts some weight into all of them. Yeah, I do. I do. Um, it's really fun for me. I I like the esoteric and occult stuff. So, you know, when I'm when I want to learn something new, it's usually like something along the lines of the occult or esoteric okay you're gonna look up me now mm -hmm. oh my god i'm right here jeez who's this lady it's my wife rachel who's this lady who said that <laughs> um where's my grandpa no someone said uh who is this girl where is my favorite grandpa <laughs> <laughs> So, you're actually this girl, not this lady, my mistake. Hi, grandchild gorilla tag pro. Thanks, Thanks Apple Peel. I think I, I definitely can tell you we're a great couple. Like, we get along swimmingly, we never fight, we have the same taste in things, same general priorities in life, etc. you know. Mm -hmm. Eric is a fire horse in his day. Fire horse! All right, tell us more about my fire horsery. I am. Hi, Chris Chapman. Put on your glasses, folks. Things are about to get hot, hot, hot. Legends have it that Greek god Helios, the, su the god of the sun, drives a horse-drawn carriage through the sky. It is the perfection, de perfection depiction for the fire horse, or to give it a more common name, Bing Wu. Bing Wu. That's what they called me back in school. Bing Wu. Radiant in your intensity, fiercely independent, and brilliantly creative, stand by for a lot of superlatives in this post. Uh-huh. That's right, girl. Go ahead. <laughs> Yours is a day master that literally sits on its own goat blade. As scary as that might sound, I don't know. Goat blade brings a lot of gifts to the fire horse, which... Key of which are your strong will, blazing intelligence, and boundless energy. Well, I don't know if I have a strong will or boundless en energy. You do have blazing intelligence. I'm pretty. I, I'm pretty good with the intelligence I have, right? So you I'm, have will, intelligence, and energy. I don't feel particularly <laughs> willful, but I, you know, I, I can be very willful in terms of like arguing with people. Yeah, that's yeah. <coughs> Additionally, the fire horse is also one of the six element day masters, which makes this pillar highly attractive to others. In short, people are literally enthralled and captured by your brilliance. And you're able to con sustain a live stream. Well, I mean, tell that to, uh, what was his name? Gift Calf. Oh, yeah, gift gap. He didn't like me very much. That's true. What was that bubbling noise? That was the sound of smoke being pulled through water. I don't really like dragon... Ball Z. I don't like Dragon Ball Z either. What the hell is this? This is what's known as a live stream, Rodney McIntyre. Chad Linton, is it true? <coughs> I think I read that. I think I saw a post that said like the creator of Dragon Ball Z or the artist 
for Dragon Ball Z recently passed. Is that right? What is K2? Um, I don't know what K2 is. I know it's the title, the name of a mountain near Everest, but, um... <coughs> the, the creator or the artist? Same thing. Oh, it is the same thing? Yeah, it's not like they have, they split up the manga ours and the writers in Japan. Hey, Chris Chapin. A wreath 13th is synthetic weed. Oh, no, no, no. No, I'm... I'm smoking regular weed. I have plenty of it. I don't want any synthetic I don't want weed. any. I wouldn't want any artificial. Who names these dreams? Me. I name them. Uh, I'm not sure what strain it is. Um. We we got a whole bunch of it. I don't really know what strain it is. I it's it is good weed, but I've we've had it for such a long time. I'm pretty sick of it at this point. Sometimes I'll hit this, you know. This is a vape thing that we got. Where is the other little thing? This thing? Yeah. I want to switch it out. Yeah, I think it needs to be refilled. I'm, I'm gonna refill that. Yeah. So we live in California. There's no, certainly no reason to get synthetic weed for us. But um, why did you name it with the word skibbity? Uh, an, an attempt to create a a striking juxtaposition between me, the word old, and me looking my oldest on purpose by sprinkling up my face, you know. And the uh, youth culture enthusiasm, current enthusiasm for the word skibbity. I left it dot, dot, dot so that people could fill it in with either toilet, which is what they expect to fill it in with, or what I would fill it in with, which is bomba clats. <laughs> Ooh, chicken fingers. What a nice mom you have. So that's why I titled it like that. Are you and Elaine still planning on visiting in July? I don't want to try synthetic cannabis. Yeah, I don't either. No. That dude had the pulse on the zeitgeist. Oh shit, you overdosed on it? It's hard not to when you, uh, when you, first of all, excellent sentence, by the way. That's a very, um, a very apt and deft observation stated nicely as well. Um, but it's hard not to when you are both intuitive like me and constantly live streaming because the YouTube audience is obviously by and large younger than me and a decent portion of the YouTube audience, especially the shorts audience is, uh, even younger than, than that. So, uh, because I started vertically live streaming, and I'm getting people coming in through here from the shorts feed. Yeah, I'm getting it. At least some portion of them are skewing quite young, and a lot of the young, the youngest population of people around here, they tend to get they tend to bandwagon on certain memes, I guess you'd yeah. say, or entrances into a chat. Mm -hmm. You know, have some compassion, Eric. There is some Rasta somewhere wishing he had your stash. That's <laughs> Fair true. enough. Fair yeah, enough. That's true. I'm level level 500 gat. I'm not a skibbity sigma, okay? I just have a lot of riz and skibbity bombaclats take exception to that. But when they do, I just give them the old gat. <laughs> wow, I wasn't expecting another one. Right, well, nobody ever expects the gat from Eric, you know? It's, uh, it's my secret weapon. It happens so fast, people don't even know they've been gatted. Just like my fists of fury are the same way. For example, like this. Crunch them! Whoa! 
You could barely even see my hand passing in front of the camera. That's how fast my karate chops are. Hi, vending machines, man. Oh, no. Hi, S7, Elias. 1B Giat level. Sheesh, says Chad Linton. Who's saying sheesh? Oh, about me? I'm a Chad. Well, I don't need to be a Chad because I never was a puss slayer, right? Um, I'm perfectly happy slaying the puss of my beloved and beautiful wife, Rachel. Can you say I'm the ultimate Rizzler and I'm the true alpha and will attack you with my gat? I could. I did just say it when I, when I read your comment was, there. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but, you know, Giga Chad, whatever that means, it should mean, if it means anything that applies to me, it should not mean slay the puss. Because I've never been somebody who wanted to sleep around at all. I've always been a relationship person. In that regard, you could say I'm the giga beta, you know. <laughs> I'm a beta male by heart who has none of the weaknesses of beta males. Yeah, because you're an eight. So. Well, because I'm at this point in my life, what do I have to be anything about except just feel like I'm big pimping, you know? I've yeah. got a hot young wife, a beautiful house. I get to live stream all the time. I've got internet fame of a sort by YouTube. I've battled myriad people on myriad topics long enough to know that I've got all the right positions on everything and can win all the arguments. I'm doing what I love to do, which happens to also be just tailor-made for who I naturally am. And now all of a sudden, it seems to be paying off as I'm getting a bunch of new subscribers and shit. So obviously, I, I'm i feeling more pimping than I ever had in my entire life. Even when I was winning national championships and stuff, I, that made me feel pretty pimping too, you know. we I ran a juggernaut of a debate program. We won a lot. But I feel happier now than I ever have before. Everything's... Everything's everything anyone could ever want it to be in life. You know, what I do all day is what I'm tailor-made to do. And now it might even start to pay off. Me too. I mean, even when I had my group of friends and we used to like go out and social, socialize a lot, like I prefer my lifestyle now than, than I had it then. Um... What sport did I did we play? Now, I was a coach of competition flow debate. So I had debaters who competed against debaters from other schools. And my programs did well. All the programs I ever coached did well. Rebe, kudos, autonomy. My favorite Taylor Swift song is actually a song that Rihanna sings, but Taylor Swift wrote. Um, it's the one that's like, baby, this is what you came for. Lightning strikes every time she moves. <coughs> I mean, my favorite Taylor Swift song is uh, from her very first album. Oh, yeah. I forgot about that song. It's called Romeo and Juliet. Yeah. I can't, every time I think of her. Taylor Swift and I think of she wears short skirts, I wear t-shirts. Which one is that one? Uh, that it belongs to me. Oh, that's a really good one too. Yeah. But I think yeah, I think those two are a toss-up. I, I don't know if I which one I like better. When we were both young, when I first saw you, I closed my eyes and the flashback starts, I'm standing there. 
on a balcony in summer air. See the lights, see the party, the ball gowns. See you make your way through the crowd. Say hello. A little did I know that you were Romeo. You were throwing pebbles, and my daddy said, "Stay away from Juliet." And I was crying on the staircase, begging you, please don't go. And I said, Romeo, take me somewhere we can be alone. I'll be waiting. All there's left to do is run. You'll be the prince and I'll be the princess. It's a love story, baby, just say yes. So I sneak out to the garden to see you. And we keep quiet because we're dead if in you. So close your eyes. Escape this town for a little while. Cause you were Romeo, a scarlet letter And my daddy said stay away from Juliet But you were everything to me And I was begging you please don't go And I said Romeo take me Somewhere we can be alone I'll be waiting All there's left to do is run You'll be the princess I'll be the princess It's a love story Baby just say yes And then the bridge I got tired of waiting, wondering if you were ever coming around. My faith was fading. When I met with you on the outskirts of town, I said, Romeo, save me. I've been feeling so alone. I keep waiting, but you never seem to come. Is it my head? I don't know what to think. He knelt to the ground and he pulled out a ring. Said, marry me, Juliet. You'll never have to be alone. I love you. That's all I really know. I talked to your dad. Go pick out a white dress, babe. Is this a love story, baby? Just say yes. Thank you. There's a Taylor Swift song for you. What's that Bleachers one called again? Uh, Along With Me. Well, okay. It sounds similar to that. Right, it's kind of a similar vibe. Let's play that one, though. Belong to me or with me? Belong with me, sorry. No, that's what you said. I just... Oh. I just had thought it was belong to me. I guess belong with me. Oh, you belong with me. Okay, Rachel, can you scroll down mm -hmm. when I get there? Sure. Thank you. All right, here we go. Oops. You're on the phone with your girlfriend. She's upset. She's going off about something that you said. And she doesn't get your humor like I do. Okay, that's how it goes, right? When you're, you're on the phone with your girlfriend, she's upset. She's doing off about something that you said. Cause she doesn't get your humor like I do. I'm in my room, it's a typical Tuesday night. I'm listening to the kind of music she doesn't like. And she'll never know your story like I do. But she wears short skirts, I wear t-shirts, she's cheer captain and I'm on the bleachers Dreaming about the day you wake up and find you with the lucky boy been here the whole time Where I can see that I'm the one who understands you've been here all along So why can't you see you belong with me, you belong with me Wow. Walking the streets with you in your worn out jeans I can't help thinking this is how it ought to be Laughing on a park bench thinking to myself Hey, isn't this easy? 
And you've got a smile that could light up this whole town I haven't seen it in a while since so she brought you down You know you're fine, better than that Hey, what you doing with a girl like that? Cause she wears high heels, I wear sneakers She's your captain and I'm on the bleachers Dreaming about the day you wake up and find that What you're looking for's been here the whole time I can see that I'm the one who understands you Been here all along, so why can't you see You belong with me Standing by waiting at your back door all the time. How could you not know? That's a different thing. I don't know. That's enough of that song. <laughs> I remember like you and I at Johnny's concert were like, we were like, what song is this? Like when he first started <laughs> singing and then yeah. we were like, oh yeah, that song. Yeah. It was Taylor Swift the whole time. And now she's in the box seats. Her boyfriend's playing. Right. Yeah, she got a football boyfriend and everything now. Yeah. Okay, can you um make that window go away? Nope. <gasps> that's fine. I want Mitt remove reduce it, but that's fine. Good. You, we're fine. You know, you can reduce that one. No, no, exit, just reduce it, yeah. I'm going to play this song now. <laughs> this is a Eric song. Every life lived reaches a time when the road splits in two. times, the dark times, the times of despair, the times when it's hard to feel good, and that's when I look for my sack full of solvency and that satchel of helpful good. Satchel of helpful goods. Satchel of helpful goods. Satchel of helpful goods. Every life lived reaches a time when the road comes to an end. travel all along now that's when I look for my sack full of solvency and a statue filled up with home yeah that statue now nothing but bone Satchel of helpful goods, a 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 satchel of helpful goods. Thank you, darling. Thank you. I think while I have the guitar in my hands, I'm gonna play another song as well. This time I'm gonna play Going to the Low.
and I'm going to plug in the guitar. sound of it plugged in you know let's see what what I could play right now that would be fun to play well let me play let me pull the set list play something I haven't didn't play earlier okay so a little something called set list bobet list it's got many of the songs we put on it and I think I'll play on this occasion, possibly, I think, well, I think I'm going to go with this first, at least. Uh, big problem. <coughs> I don't play it all that often, but that... I should play more, probably. Oh, he came here with her. And what's the big problem that you can't endure? You seem so sure it's not appropriate claiming to blame things on Scott. Just by getting caught, he's got you. We're framing for him, straining for him. Going to the gym to make yourself good enough again. Problem that you can't endure. 
You seem so sure it's not appropriate claiming to blame things on Scott. Despite getting caught, he got you. We're framing for him, straining for him, going to the gym to make yourself good enough again. Be done with him. I didn't play that particularly well. Thank you, Darlene, but I really didn't play that very well, unfortunately. <laughs> I'll try this one, which is also in the same, basically has the same chords to it. D minor, B flat, F, you know. But... Good comes from skating on with them whom you'd mistake for the one. Habituated defense and indecency, self inflicts eventually once your search is done. Driving in the car last night. Had a massive fight. Each insistent we were right, and the other one to blame. So when you bought that stunt, I screamed something awfully blunt. My words were as wrong as they were dumb, and I burned my share of shame. It's each of our own failing, not us doing the nailing to the wall. So the others sailing off to reset their life and all. You can trust me and I can trust you, though neither trusts ourselves much true. The love lies deep between you and me. At least about that we can both agree. We're driving in the car last night. We had a massive fight. Each insisted we were right and the other one. I screamed, you're a worthless cunt. My words were as wrong as they were dumb, and I've earned my share of shame. My share of shame. That was better. I'll end on that one. It still wasn't great, but it was fun. And what do you expect from your voice is kind of shot anyway from being sick and can only expect so much. Thank you, thank you. <clears throat> do I know any weird Al Yankovic? I don't know any weird Al Yankovic. Hi, Anager. Can you do Before He Cheats by Carrie Underwood? Don't know the song, so cannot play it. I have to know how to sing it before I can even begin to think of playing it. It's the one Carrie Underwood song that you know. Really? How does it go? It's like... Okay, <laughs> see? Do we really know it? I don't know. I don't know well enough to sing it. Um, well, we kind of have our own band, you know. Like, for those of you who have not seen it, let me uh, share you share you and show you a video of me and Rachel singing um singing Gregory because it's not just that we play it with 
and you know, guitar and singing. We do. I have recorded plenty of things as well, <coughs> and made like music videos and stuff. So. to wait until we got to the part where Rachel had put on the Einstein mm -hmm. wig and mustache. That's my favorite part of the video. So we do in fact have some, we have a fair number of songs recorded and stuff. Uh, I'm not super thrilled with my recordings in general. I'm not a great music producer. I don't have a drum set, so I'm trying to Manufactured drones either by programming them or by uh, getting tracks, backing tracks or whatever from the internet. <laughs> and when I recorded all the music that I currently have recorded, I did not have a bass. And in fact, I didn't even have the current guitar I have. I just had an acoustic guitar. That's how I had to record everything with, was with just an acoustic guitar and mics for the voices, you know. So it's pretty... It's pretty kind of thin sounding, you know? Good night, Grandpa. Good night, Gorilla. I need to get my glasses so I can see things. Yeah, that song's called Angeline. To the undertown, Angeline in tow. To a secret unattended show. Under blazing blue and tropical skies. Angeline is stuck with you. She can't stand other guys. Keep running till the day is done. Lose your time and... You're not. This has been born a son of a gun. But if you die, it's hooky. <laughs> that song's hooky. I, it's not, I'm not happy with the recording of it at all. And I, I wouldn't mind. Uh, it needs to be shorter, the track does. It should just be like, basically, what I just sang twice through and that's it. It's got some sort of a bridge thing that it doesn't need. Just get rid of it. Maybe have one of the portions one of the times through be instrumental. 
have the whole thing run about a minute and a half long, it'd be perfect. I need to re-record and do that one from scratch, you know? I don't even know how to play it at all. Bob, can you draw Rachel without looking at her? Good question. Who's Bob? Charlie Art Stuff, way back when, says, yeah, you're back. No, this is going to be a very low chat rate in this one tonight. We do have 25 people here regardless, and that's uh, not bad for the third stream of the day. Mm, let me get also a an Agua. But what's even better than having 25 people is having to go from 25 to 16 and then maybe again go back to 25. Because that's where you periodically pull off one or two people who are actually interested in your stream, you know? By having those new new eyes on you. Is that that's your water, right, Rachel? Yeah. Well, I, did I didn't I have a water? You did. Maybe I drank it all, I don't know. I'm getting another water. Oh, this is stuck, I see. This is stuck. I need to do the following thing. There, it fixed it. Okay, good. I didn't have to restart the app or anything. That's good. Eric, did it snow? No, it did not snow. Not, not recently. I mean, it's not that recently anyway. It did snow during March, but way back towards the beginning of March. There's a picture on the community tab of the channel that shows uh, this right here, these things, these this little hill, these trees and stuff, except they're all covered in snow. And it says, is this my front yard in March? If you'd like to see the house in snow, you just got to go to the community tab of my YouTube channel. And the last post I put up was a picture of the snow early in March. I think that's the last post to put up anyway. Pretty sure. <coughs> <coughs> but I really want to watch this basketball game. So I'm going to go back in in a second. And I'm not going to stop streaming. I've got to set up so I can watch the basketball game in another tab concurrently. I want to see if Colorado can beat Boise State. Like, if Colorado loses to Boise State, I'm going to be down on the Pac-12 in general on the men's brackets. I'm going to say, okay, well, Oregon beat Arizona and Colorado. Colorado couldn't even beat Boise State. Uh, going into the Pac-12 tournament, Arizona was the, you know, runaway favorite, followed by uh, Colorado, no, followed by Washington State, then Colorado. If neither Arizona nor Washington State could win the Pac-12 tournament and Colorado can't beat Boise State, then I'm thinking, eh, I should probably pick against the Pac-12, even though they only have four entries. All right, let's go inside and let's see if I think it's quite plausible, maybe even likely. We'll see if I have a poop in my butt that's ready to come out. I mean, I'm, I think it's very likely that I have a poop in my butt. The question is, is it ready to come out? I could have all the poops in the world in my butt. It wouldn't do me any good whatsoever unless they're ready to come out. So, we're going to spin the poop wheel again today and hope we, we land on something good, you know. 
Because I've spun the poop wheel many times today, and almost every single time, this is why I've had to spin it many times, it's come up single tiny poop. And then I have to come back later and do another single tiny poop. I don't know why it's spreading it out like this today, but it's decided to give me trouble. So let's see if I can squeeze out something a little more substantial this time. Oh, I did get some of that smooth move tea. Rachel, could you make me a cup of that? Yes. You're the one who knows how to boil water. Um, yes, I do. Okay. Are you, were you going to say, like, maybe that's not a good idea or something? Just put a coffee cup with water in the microwave until it's hot, and then put the tea bag in it. <laughs> oh my god. Thank you. Sorry for my TV cooler. That's okay. I don't, I don't want people to get the wrong idea. I don't ask Rachel to serve me stuff all the time. But there are a couple of things that I won't make for myself and I'll ask her to serve me. Those things are a cup of noodles, salad, and something like this that involves boiling water. In other words, it's the same technology as cup of noodles. And then I think, after I check on the basketball game for a second, see where we are, depending on where we are in the basketball game, I'm figuring it's probably about halftime. Um, maybe a little later than that. Maybe it's into the second half. But if it's early in the second half or halftime, I think I'm going to uh, take a... An SI reset shower. I feel stinky. I feel gross a little bit. Oh, don't worry. I'll take you in there with me. We won't be able to chat because I'll be showering, but you can chat among yourselves. Very long. Zero poofs came out this time, so. I can tell there's another poop up in there, though. It's just not wanting to. It's like my water hasn't broken yet, you know? So let's check on the basketball game. Um. And then let's, let's probably move on to the shower. Well, maybe I'll drink my tea, but probably I'll wait for it to cool a bit. Let's we'll see what the basketball game is doing. I'm going to need my mouse and keyboard. Bob's. Okay. Yeah, yeah. There we go.
go on the Colorado Boys team. We're going to join live. We're going to mute poot. We need to put our way to victory. <coughs> and uh, we're going to pull this tab out. We're going to bring it over like here. And we're going to bring this chat up here. Hi, Kelly Douglas. Why is he still recording? I'm not recording. I'm live streaming. Why am I still live streaming? Because I want to. Am I an eternalist or a presentist? I do not know what either of those terms mean. What is an F book? What's a skivity? I don't know what a skivity is exactly. It's just something the kids say. Um, They're all into that F book, or you mean Facebook? You know, I'm pretty sure the kids aren't that into Facebook, actually, Lady in Red. They're more into the gram. I don't tweet, twerk, twitch, or snap. Pepe. Stephen Dupree, I'm saying Pepe for you, but not because I want to sub, just because you indicated you wanted me to say it. That's all it took. You don't need to promise me anything. Well, this, the gram is still Zuck's domain. Yes, true, Bob UFO. But I felt as though basically what happened was Facebook fucked up Facebook, so they're like, oh, shit, we better get Instagram, because, <laughs> you know, they just, they didn't really know what they were doing with it, what they wanted it to do, what they wanted it to be, how it was going to, yeah. Do you believe in Bigfoot? No, I don't think so. Uh, I, I would like to. I've seen some things that are kind of, Sneaky, snippy, difficult to explain, whatever, but I don't believe in Bigfoot. Snapchat is a psyop? <laughs> Bobby, if, oh, I don't think you get the idea of what a psyop is. A psyop is not a platform that enables others to speak to one another. Winston's mom? Or W-Y-N? Well, you, I don't know what that means. When? I don't share at all. Don't I don't trust nobody, and I don't care who you are. Law. Well, lady in red, sounds like you have yourself covered. Good for you. Snapchat's amazing at data harvesting. Well, I don't know. What possible data could be worth harvesting from Snapchat? If it's not some sort of learning about consumers buying habits thing, then it's going to be just a bunch of like dick pics and whatever. It'll be right up if it's a steep for 10 minutes. Thanks, darling. You're welcome. I'm sad. Don't give me attention. It's annoying. Just wanted to mention I'm sad. This is my venting space. Well, I read it out loud anyway, so I don't know if that qualifies as giving you attention or not. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a refreshing... I said, Snapchat, if you were harvesting a bunch of data from Snapchat, you'd just end up with a bunch of dick pics. Hmm. Anyway, um, I'm going to now take an SI reset shower. Okay, because it is 
Well, okay. Granted, I, I, I think that's fine, Bob. If, if the data harvesting is for, in other words, to build profiles of consumers and their buying habits and stuff like that, what they're likely to purchase, that makes sense, okay? But that's not something the government would be concerned about. Well, I think people overvalue their personal data by a dramatic amount. People are always like, I'm not concerned about my personal data. I'm not. I'm concerned about my, you know, financial data, data that needs to be secured. Trouble! Hey! But I don't think that it's a good thing that uh, those people are like, you do not sell my information. It's like this whole privacy thing, just get over it, everybody. Every time there's an appeal for strong privacy, it's also an appeal to deny every single other living person on the planet access to that information. You might call it your private information. It's not your private information. It's information about you, right? Your private information is like your financial stuff, like your bank password, your your Gmail account. You know, you don't want your shit to get hacked, right? But the idea that your browsing habits or something like that, you should be concerned about the privacy thereof is insane. It's completely insane, completely unnecessary. And it even hinders corporations' ability to pair you better with products you actually might want, you know? What's wrong with that? So, no. No, no, no to privacy. Just everybody just needs to get over the bad selves. What we need is radical transparency. Then, in fact... Everybody would realize that there, there are only two kinds of people hiding things. People hiding things because they feel guilty, they've done something bad, and they think it needs to be hidden. Well, people hiding things because they feel embarrassed, but there's nothing to feel embarrassed about because it's the same sort of shit everybody does in private. Or, the worst kind of all, people who are hiding nefarious behavior, you know? You don't want people to successfully hide nefarious behavior, criminality, Jeffrey Epstein shit or whatever. But that's what's enabled by strong privacy. Oh, no! We have a scorpion here. Appears to be dead. Okay, so the bottom line takeaway is if you don't want to empower evildoers. Just so that you can hide stuff you shouldn't even be embarrassed about. No. Privacy is bad. Black. All right, now I'm getting the shot.
Ah. Hmm. Well, good to be clean. Clean is one of my favorite ways to be. Generally, I prefer it to be dirty. Okay. <sighs> well, take a couple of your towels. It's all of the following, I mean, it's 
a pain reliever, a fever reducer, and a mood stabilizer. It's a pretty great drug, which is why they let it they let it through despite the unusually low distance between effective and toxic dose. Because really, Tylenol is one of the most remarkable drugs ever invented. It's very effective at multiple things. Reliably effective. I like it a lot more than ibuprofen or aspirin or Aleve. Okay. <coughs> okay, a couple of these vitamins as well. Premium performance multivitamins. Good. Now let's go into the other room. Put this hat on. Turn these lights off. Grab my glasses and lighter. Let's go see how this basketball game's doing. We may be pointing towards a part of this live stream that I like to call basketball play by play. Ricky, it's Friday. Thank you, darling. You're welcome. How was your shower? Uh, in yeah, resetting. As it should be like. A good SI, a good way of paying attention to your SI for a little bit. This hot tea is going to help too. I've been drinking water, so that's good. Took a couple Tylenol. This, this tea is pretty hot i suppose hello mrs ma'am how is she how is she that means you i think you're she the key to speaking chinese to say, you to say, if somebody else is speaking Chinese to you, you say, Dwe, 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 ah. Gato and cat is, is cat in Spanish. True. That is true, what you say. You can take Tylenol and Aleve together. Um, I could, I don't have any leave, so. <coughs> Put this down here a little lower. Okay. So, what we have coming up 
in the immediate present and future is a little bit of commentary from me, yours truly, host Eric, on the uh, Colorado Boise State basketball game, which is the last of the play in games before tomorrow's big day. Big day tomorrow, day of the year in some sense. Doxylamine is a superior antihistamine. Superior drying you out or superior making you sleepy? I just take Benadryl to sleep usually. Right now, I feel like taking one because I'm a little bit congested, but that's not normally why I take it. So, the, actually, the one I like best is Chlorotrimeton. It's not, that's the old brand name for it. It's not called that. That's not the name of the actual medication. It's Chlorofluoroblora or something, you know. But, uh, I find Chlorotrimeton works really well on me. And they only last four hours, so it's like, you don't end up drowsy from it at all. Um, but... Anyway, it's, they often don't have chlorotrimeton in this in the pharmacy or whatever. They'll have they do have it, you know, like say at CVS as a store brand only. But I've gone in on more than one occasion; they've not had any of it in stock. It's not a very common uh, antihistamine anymore it's what my mom always took when i was a kid and what she gave me too for trimeton yeah you can't find it all the time yeah i never found that claritin worked for me with allergies i never used allegra but Claritin never really worked for me. Hmm. So doxylamine is the most one of the most sedating over the counter antihistamines. Well, that's good to know. I will check it out. I will check it, check it out with my checking out bone. I wonder what's in this stuff. It just tastes like kind of herbal tea. You want me to hit the box? I was just, just making conversation. <laughs> I don't care that much. I miss those Lunesta commercials, Lunesta butterfly flying into the sleeping person. <laughs> Is Lunesta uh, specifically a sleep drug? Yeah, it was Lunesta. One of the drugs that made people get up in the middle of the night and like sleep drive places. Uh, to, to, to the best of my knowledge, that is most of all uh, a um, ambient thing. Hi, Vidya okay. Maharaj. How are you? I understand you're new. Okay. You are hereby welcomed. I knew someone who was on Ambien. Her her boyfriend uh, was on Ambien because he, police officer and uh, like had strained work strained hours. <clears throat> and one of the things that was concerning was like something like that happened. Um, I don't remember if he got he might have gotten into the car, but he I don't think he drove anywhere. But he got into the car. And uh, it was freaked. It freaked them out, and they didn't. But they didn't know what to do for, for sleep. So it was right when Ambien kind of came out, too. Mm. Of course, Rachel takes Clonopin for sleep, which is a benzo. It's not a particular, particularly sleep drug. You know, like Ambien, it doesn't work the same way the benzo does. I think Lunesta the same kind of thing. Um, of course, it's very tricky 
to make a drug that makes you go to sleep, right? If you think about it, it, because obviously you could like anesthetize someone, but was truly amazing stuff. Hi, Mr. Nas 777. Um, I asked Kirk Burger sixty nine. My day is going fine. How's your day going? Full of guinea pigs? It looks like a guinea pig in a circle, is it? All right, so let's talk a little bit about how am I? I am fine, Maria Hater. A deer? Is that Hater? Maria Hater. Do you hate Maria's? Are you okay? You look sad. No, Mr. Na 777. You figured it out. I am really, really sad right now. I'm so sad. It wasn't just because of Ask selling your <laughs> bath water. It was because you were making rude comments towards Winston's mom and Luminix, and I got bothered. Yeah, Rachel, you don't even need to justify it. You just say, you annoyed me. That's it. Um, what's the first memory that comes to mind? Well, as soon as you said first memory, I started thinking um, about what's the first memory I remember at all. And, okay, ask Crackburger, you're already annoying me. You're going on timeout again. Quit whining. Okay, how about that? How about you quit whining? You don't have to be offensive to get timed out. You can get timed out just for being boring or just annoying me by me. Just shut the fuck up. Your name's Ass Crack Burger 69. What do you expect? Do you think you could put this on party mode? Yeah, sure. I'm not actually sad, <laughs> Marie HDR. I don't think this is. Oh, it is. No. I don't know. Now it's on party mode. Cause I think it's not lighting up. Nah, Mr. Nah, I'm not actually sad. Why would I look sad? I'm happy. So my shirt says, thank you, 39. My wife's 39. Yeah. Thank you, Lord, for my 39-year-old wife. No, I'm not sad at all. I am instead, an alternative to sad, happy. One of my favorite alternatives to sad. I think he's sad too, lol. He just isn't wanting to admit it. He is masking with his sarcastic mask. I haven't sensed any sarcasm in Eric just now. <laughs> I'm definitely you happy. You don't use sarcasm very often. I mean, I did sort of use it right then oh, when I did? said like... Originally, when he asked the question, oh, I'm so sad, I was obviously being, oh. being ironic or sarcastic or whatever you that want to call is, it. Yeah. But the point is, uh, certainly, mm -hmm. my sarcasm is not a mask in this in this, this part of the conversation. I am genuinely happy. And I haven't always been in life. Nobody really is. I spent, spent plenty of stretches of life where... I felt 
more or less happy depending on what was going on and stuff. Right now is a particularly happy period of my life. I've never been depressed. I'm an optimistic guy, a pretty positive guy. And, uh, <coughs> but obviously sometimes things go more smoothly in your life than other times. Right now things are going very smoothly in my life. Yeah, why is that a show? I don't know. It's horrible. It's just, it's just like people without ideas, right? How do we not? How do we not talk? Uh, I'm sure it's practically all scripted. Uh, yeah, I don't bother with masks. <laughs> what you see is what you get. If I'm sad, you'll definitely be hearing all about it. Oh my God, I'm so sad today. I'm really like feeling down. You know, whatever I actually am is what you will hear about. I'm not into like picking, picking Picking and choosing what you get to find out about me in order to try to craft your perceptions of me. I'm into trying to genuinely be a cool, interesting person so that you'll like me, maybe, but I'm not interested in... I can't remember well enough to lie or make shit up or hide stuff. I just, I just can't roll like that. It's too hard. I do have a smoking jacket, but this is not it. I am very skibbity. It's true. I am as skibbity as a bomba clat lacking Riz because they have no giat. That's how skibbity I am. Oh, well, thanks, Sarah. I I want to be cool. I like the idea of being cool. That's why I don't really like wearing these glasses because they're not cool. They're these orange glasses I got at the supermarket because I could easily find them. And because I didn't have very many choices and I needed a new pair of glasses. But if I don't wear them, then I can't read the chat. So sometimes you have to sacrifice cool for ability to read. I don't have a leather vest. Doesn't seem much like a sad face, more like an innocence to statements he says. Of course, there's certainty, but a lot of times he raises eyebrows. I do raise my eyebrows. What? What are you talking about? Thanks, Lou. I just, I mean, I don't think they look bad on me. I just think they're obviously trying too hard. <laughs> you know, I, I, I just, I want them, uh, a more understated pair of glasses, you know? One that's, that's playing a little more cool. A little more third slot FE cool. Like, this is this is all cool what I'm wearing right now, right? I got a cool hat on. I got a supremely cool anime shirt on that's just the right kind of anime shirt, which is nobody even knows it is an anime shirt unless they know which anime it's from, right? That's how you be cool. But these glasses, they're just failing me at every turn. <laughs> if they were green or something, maybe fine. Or a darker orange, you know? Like, if they were this color, great. That'd be fine. I could go with that. But this, you know, cone putter orange is just, it's a little obnoxious as a color. That's what that shade of orange is called, cone putter orange, because it's the same as the cones they put in the road. <sighs> Look at me. I'm as helpless as a kitten. 
up a tree. And I feel like I'm floating on a cloud. I can't understand, I get misty just holding your hand. Walk my way, and a thousand violins begin to play. Or it might be the sound of your hello. The music I hear, I get misty the moment you're near. You can say that you're leading me on, but it's just what I want you to do. Yeah, I'm just gonna end the song right there. Because it's interfering with my ability to smoke this cigarette. It's a jazz classic named called Misty by a guy named Earl Garner. He's a jazz pianist. And I believe the song was originally written as an instrumental. Lyrics were added later. Here's another, here's the bridge of another jazz song, just the bridge. You can tell at a glance what a swell night it is for romance. You can hear dear mother nature murmuring low. Let yourself go. <clears throat> That's the bridge from Cole Porter's Delilah. Very prolific songwriter, Cole Porter. He wrote so many hits. It's crazy. We don't, a lot of the songs that you may be familiar with, you may not even know that they're Cole Porter songs. Like, I think he wrote, All of me, why not take all of me? I think he wrote that. I'm not sure, though, actually. I don't even know what all of his, like, you know, which, all, which all songs are his. So many are. It's crazy. All of Me is a good song. All right, let's see how the basketball game is going. Only four and a half minutes left in the game. What brand of cigarettes are my favorite? Marlboro Reds. Those are the only kind of cigarettes I smoke. If they're out of Marlboro Red shorts, I'll get Marlboro Red hundreds. But I'll only get one pack of those because I don't want to be stuck with a bunch of Marlboro Red 100s. How skibbity are, are, am I on a scale of 1 to 10? I would say I'm yat level of skibbity. As to what exact number that represents, I'm not sure. That, somebody's going to have to do some research in translating quantities of yat. I'm a three exclamation point yat amount of skibbity on a scale of 1 to 10. So somebody's going to need to research the conversion rate Skibbity plus, um, plus exclamation points 
into decimal numbers. You know, that's, yeah, it, totally that's a foul. Obviously that's a foul. Shake it for us. What would you like me to shake? This? Is that satisfying? Yeah, I'm pretty good at this. How skibbity are you in your mind? Well, I would say my skibbity level is giat with three exclamation points. You know, and we could we could debate back and forth regarding. You know, that's a gat, Sarah. A giat is one of these right here. Gat. Today is your birthday. Hi, bad. Are you really a bad bunny? Are you bad behavior? I don't know what skibbity is actually. It just it's like a a means nothing kind of adjective that you put in front of things and or it just means like screwed up kind of messed up or not great or whatever. What movie is this for? I don't know, but I know I met her. You met that lady? Yeah. Really? Yeah, at a concert. She was like standing uh behind me and I was like I'm a real big fan of your stuff I was kind of a little gassed well <laughs> no good job meeting her say. you were taught you talked with the famous person so that's we can answer that question now who are famous who we talked about and say that lady in that movie oh, shit. yeah I don't know her, remember her name um something Williams so this question here, um, which asks me, am I a small block man or a big block man? I don't know what that question means. So I can't answer it. Am I Sigma? I don't self-identify as Sigma, no. But uh, you might choose to label me such. I'm not entirely sure what Sigma entails. Can somebody explain Sigma to me? Sigma's like, from what I've learned on YouTube, because you know, that has the greatest information. Mm -hmm. Sigma is like a non-reactive person. It's basically like someone who believes in stoicism. I'm no stoic. Phantom tax is the internet slang that refers to the act of stealing food from someone usually in a playfully or mis playful or mischievous way. The term, term was coined by American streamer Phantom in late 2022, who would jokingly tax other members of his influencer crew by taking food from them while they were eating. Hmm. Well, I don't do that. It's like, I never, while live streaming, I don't take food from Rachel. <laughs> no. I don't know if, uh, if in fact you would call her my influencer crew, but perhaps you would. Sigma is not what she said. Okay. Uh, uh, ultimate daddy. Ultimate daddy. Honestly, Sigma, that's what I learned about Sigma is it's, so I guess it just means something different. All right, well, let me Google Sigma. Because, like, I had, there was, like, they talked about the Sigma INFJ. How the Sigma INFJ doesn't get mad when someone rejects her. She just moves on to her life and picks up a new hobby. Something like that. Introverted yeah. straight male. But that says they're introverted straight male or a person who rejects the social hierarchy but still holds power and charisma. Yeah. Yeah, I guess I'm a Sigma. I don't know. <laughs> you can label me that it's sort of thing if you want. Than beta or alpha. That's not my daughter, and she sounds congested. 
Uncongested. Constipated is not the same thing as congested, okay? <laughs> what's up with your like what's up with your flag? Is it like it's an Israel flag, but it's got a swastika. Oh my on it. god, it's so re- he, I mean, he's it's just so wrong. Well, he's being provocative. I know? I get that. I'm not for Israel. I'm for Gaza. I don't even fucking know. Oh right, it's it's the other thing that looks like a swastika, but is actually a symbol for something else. Yes, but you know that's fine, crocify. But is. you know what? You're just crocifying the shit out of what you're saying right now. So let's just not pay any more attention. It just is, but it's also been taken over by whatever. Whatever. It's designed to provoke. So if yeah. we want to if we want to manage our response, we'll try to under be provoked. Okay. Do I have riz? See, I have non-sexual riz in the sense that I'm a Long-term relationship guy. I'm not. Yeah, I know what bomba clap means. Um, I'm. Uh, I'm very not interested in playing the field. I never have been ever, but I do have a fair amount of. Well, I'm very comfortable in my skin, and I. I've been doing this for a very long time, right? So I've encountered every possible kind of hater, troll, provocateur, etc. And I've developed ever improving skills in managing this kind of environment, a live stream environment in particular. Although it feels like my my ability to be non-reactive and to to control all the narratives um has really kind of opened up in the last couple of months too you know that's my wife rachel she's 39 i'm 52 people always say is she my daughter no she's my wife i do have a daughter she's 25 she lives in los angeles and she is not rachel's kid obviously no rachel would have had to been 14 when she had delilah if she were her mother so Are you a photographer? Because I picture you and me together. Sigma male. You see, Sarah, it needs to be you and me together because both the you and the me are functioning as direct objects in that sentence. I'm a former English teacher, so you can trust me on this. Is your dad Arby's? Because you have the meats. <laughs> <laughs> That's a um, a great pickup line, Sarah. See you, Lady in Red. You have a nice night, too. I'd say a good pickup line would be, Hey, would you like to practice being consenting adults with me? You could also possibly just open with, yeah, look bolt, you know. I'd like to go somewhere with you and discuss the concepts of consensual adulthood. Are you a fart? Because you just blew me away. (laughs) Farts don't blow things away, right? (laughs) You might blow away a fart if you have a fart blower with you, but I don't think you'll use a fart to blow anything else away. That's not very risful. Hi, lady. I am hereby picking up on you. Which sort of pickup line would you be responsive to? (laughs) What do you think about that as a pickup line approach, right? Instead of having a line, why don't you ask her, what pickup line are you most responsive to? 
I think that would probably be very effective. Well, LaJoy, I understood that it was a joke, but what I was saying was not that it wasn't a joke, but rather that as a joke, it didn't make any sense. Right? Because one does not use a fart, a fart to blow something away, but rather might blow away a fart. So even if it is a joke, it's very important that your joke makes sense. How about, hey girl, are you a saint? Because you have a holy hole. <laughs> no. <laughs> I like Rubens. Are you the sun? Because it's getting uncomfortably hot. I don't like it and it's making me sweat. <laughs> <laughs> That's more realistic. Is that you that stinks like ass? <laughs> what do you think about that as a pickup line? Oh my God. Is that you that stinks like ass? It's a great way to start a conversation with the woman that you're interested in. Yeah. Has anybody ever told you you look a lot like my grandma? That was every time. <laughs> you smell skinwalkers. Uh-oh. Maybe I am a skinwalker. That's in time. He got that off in time, for sure. Yeah, he did. It's a good play. An effective pickup line should be, I know something that will make you mad, but don't worry, you're the winner. What does that mean? How how would that work? I don't know. What's your tolerance level for for Riz? Because I'm considering directing some of mine towards you right now. Are you receptive to Riz in general? I look a lot like your little baby turds yeah well that's probably not going to do very well either are you an isfp because i would like to get your fi panties in a bunch <laughs> <laughs> you know a lot of people will tell you lady not to get your panties in a bunch but only i will help you unbunch them You have a thousand percent riz. That's ten times one hundred percent riz. Room tour. <coughs> hey, <coughs> you want to see what I have underneath my clothes? It's a surprise. <laughs> Am I a presentist? or an eternalist. Son of a ball. I read this question earlier. I have no idea what either of those terms mean. Would you like to define those terms for me? You're 10 times the maximum amount of riz you could possibly have. So that's a lot of riz. What would you say, lady, if I told you I like a woman who wears bun huggers? <laughs> I'd say, well, you mean like briefs? Yes. So the woman wears the briefs? So are you saying you want a woman with a package in front? No, no, no. I want a woman. I just, I like her in bun huggers. Pickup lines are for jokes and for men that cannot hold intelligent conversations. Oh, yeah, I don't have any need to pick up line anybody because I'm married and everything anyway. Yeah. And I never tried to use pickup lines in my life. I never also did a good job of picking up on women, but it wasn't because of a lack of lines. It was just, I was a little push shy, you know. Well, like starting with a line is kind of like a game, you know, and I keep on hearing in YouTube again, like something that I've learned from YouTube is that like, it's best to be in a relationship, like where you're not 
when you didn't start playing games. Mm, right. Good point. Let me go boobs. The joy. Teledeter models greets from Germany. Teledeter models greets from California. California, United States. Oh, zero percent skibbity. Says Antours. I'm getting a whole range of levels of skibbitiness that I have from zero to a hundred. Hmm. Put on the line. line. Greetings from your dad's house. Um, this is not my dad's house. So. You know what every young woman wants to hear? What's that? Is that your mom? Because she's got it going on. <laughs> Who are you referring to? Like, when I'm you say not... that to a woman, is that your mom? Is it somebody next to her? Yeah, like, yeah, someone's next to her. Oh, I see. I'm saying, is that your mom? Because she's got it going on. <laughs> Especially if the girl's interested in the boy. That stinks. You don't want to hear that. That's like the opposite of a pickup line. That's a ruin it line. Some of all, I mean, both time passes and the present and the past are real. It's just the past isn't extant as as the present right now. You know, it is distinct. The future is real conceptually, but hasn't happened yet. So, um, Obviously, time passes. Hey, are you yet to be diagnosed tumor? Because I literally can't get you out of my head with some sort of invasive procedure. It's probably a little wordy for a pickup line. <laughs> oh, what? Did you just ask me if I have a tumor? What about, is this your back? <laughs> then she turns around, where? And you move your finger around the other way. <laughs> this back. Yes, that's my back. Oh, I don't know the poop song. But it looks like Colorado has successfully defeated Boise State. Um... They're up by five, 24 seconds left. Colorado's going to the line for a one on one. Uh, Boise State's going to need them to miss the front <laughs> end of this, probably. <coughs> if they're going to have any chance at all. I never saw the Hummingbird Project, no. Honest opinion on Joe Biden? I mean, I don't like him. He's not a good president. He's a weak president. He's not a good communicator. You know, I'm not sure about his mental acuity, but it's not top notch, you know. It makes it a five point game, but again, but just still, they're going to have to just foul, foul, foul. Yeah. And he's very old. I think he's, you know. A little too old to be president, probably. And I don't think that he, uh, I don't think that he's, I don't think he was ever really qualified to be president, you know? I find both our choices to be funny. Well, seed of evil? Okay. Which of my choices do you find to be funny? I'm 52. I really appreciate both you and Lou informing me about the context of kept. That's what I enjoy at the channel. Skillful banner I usually don't observe normally. Yeah, well, we don't take too kindly to boringness around here. I agree Biden doesn't belong in office. And also, 
Trump doesn't belong in office. They're both horrible candidates. Will they still be on trial if he becomes, if he, he'd definitely still be on, right? I mean, will he still be on trial if he's president? No, I don't know what would happen with all that stuff. But yes, Trump and Biden are both funny choices. If you, if by funny you mean terrible. It'll make for some funny SNLs making if they can pull it together and actually be funny there's like a few people there's like one person i think of maybe two i don't even know if he's on it anymore two total people on snl that i actually think are funny one is funny on a tv show because he plays like this like overtly gay guy who can't get his life together and like cries and is funny because it's like such a caricature but he just not who is this you're talking about the um what's his name he plays the doctor in the skit of the guy who's like oh who are you no, that guy. Yeah. Oh, oh, he plays the doctor. Mm-hmm. Or, I thought he. You're not talking about the one who plays the patient. No, the patient. He's funny. The he's not a. He's like an actor. Um, I'm talking about the Asian kid. Yeah, I don't like him. He's not funny. No. Uh, dang girl, you look like you know how to fold a fitted sheet. I'm not sure. Oh my god, that is that. so hard. That is so hard to do. It is so hard to fold a fitted sheet. For me, it just like ends up as like something that looks like a fold and a and a roll at the same time. Hmm. My dream car is to own a 60 Camaro SS, but now but now days they are really expensive. So like do you think that they'll ever depreciate in in cost or will they always be expensive? <laughs> okay. Yesterday my sister told me she has erectile dysfunction. <laughs> <laughs> There's no such thing. A room tour. You mean like walk around the house? Mm, please don't. Just because the upstairs doesn't look hot. Like, I'm not. I won't go upstairs. It's fine. I could just. Do. You can go. You, you've said it before and you're right. You can't do a home tour without showing like the bedrooms. Well, I said a room tour, this person yeah. said. So that's just a room or two, you know. Um. How big is my yacht? Yeah, it's like not look. It just like I don't know. There, it's, <laughs> it's now, like now you not. Done. You could tell I live in it. <laughs> it looks fine, Sarah. She Rachel just got like clothes spread out on the bed yeah, and stuff. You know, I she's make the bed. she's organizing stuff in the blue room, and I'll just show you like the hall upstairs here, you know, or the black room. The black room's fine, right? Yeah, the black room's fine. I'll show you guys the black room then. All right, here's up. Here's upstairs. And here's the black room. I'll uh, turn this lamp on here. You can see it a little bit better. Oh, it's got this thing in the way, of course. Thanks a lot, horrible tripod. Your horrible light thing. That I don't even like. So it's called the black room because it's black there, and that's black over there, as you see. You can't see now because it's night, but 
This window looks right out onto a tree out here. You're kind of up in the tree. This is the upstairs bathroom. Um, which has a bathtub in it. The downstairs, the master bath doesn't have a bathtub. Rachel doesn't want you looking in here. But look, it's actually not messy at all, right? Like, what is she even talking about? It looks totally fine. Who would be embarrassed by that? Yes, she has one drawer pulled out. But it's like, big deal. You don't have to impress everybody that much. What does the toilet look like? Well, I'm not going back upstairs now, but I'll show you this toilet here. This is the half bath. It's got a great toilet. I put this stool here as my poop stool. This is the hallway. Yeah, the room's actually messy. It's like my room. We used to go to bed together here at night to start off with, but this one is my room, so it's pretty messy. This bathroom is my bathroom. So it's not that clean. And we have a laundry room. Here's the laundry room. See, it's got your normal laundry room things. It's got your washer, your dryer. We're fortunate. We have a top-loading washer. There's the attic. Which, you know, has stuff in it. And it's got some stuff that we store up there. Here's the garage. And there's our little wilderness car. Which we can drive out into the wilderness on the mountain roads. And over here is the kitchen. Well, here's the dining room. Currently have paper towels on the dining room and a trash can, but say la vie. And here's the kitchen. Here's my cat. He wants me to watch him eat. He also probably wants more food put on his plate because he appears to be relatively out of food. I think go pour him some more and see how he likes that. There you go, Trouble. Next is part of our tour. I'm going to go get a jacket real quick and I'll walk you around the outside too. It's dark, not a lot to see, but I'll bring a flashlight. Okay, I'm back with my jacket, my cigarettes. Let's go outside, let's take a look at the world beyond these four walls. A world of imagination. A world of wonder. So, here's the night time. Back there is night. And forest and darkness. Here is my car. Now, let's walk this way. I'm going to use 
first my left foot and then my right foot to walk this way. Now, we're over here. This is called the front door. It's different than the door I went out of. That other door is called the kitchen door. These are trash cans. Oh, sure. It would be better to put them on the deck so they're less ugly. But it's more convenient right here, so I just end up putting them right here. This is the driveway. It's for driving on with your car. Anyway, we'll be going back in shortly. Uh, let's see what other things I could potentially show you. Well, I'll tell you what, we'll turn on this light over here. That'll help a little bit. And, uh, and we can see a little bit of the garage from the outside. You may remember the garage from when we were inside the garage earlier. Well, same garage, different angle, different perspective. Looks different. So, you know, pretty special times for everybody except Barbara. Now we're really thrust into the darkness of nighttime. You can't see anything. It's like you were born blind. That's how little you can see. There's the moon. May it illuminate your journeys this evening. This moon is the same moon our forefathers saw so many years ago. This is the moon of lovers, the moon of warriors, the moon of sages and saints, the moon of women, the moon of men, our moon, Luna. So I hope you enjoyed that little poetic, you know, narrative to go along with the moon. There. There. Can you hear it? A trickling brook. Okay, I've completed this cigarillo, as it's called in France. And I believe also the Congo refers to them as such. Now we're about ready to go back inside. I'm wondering if this tea is starting to work already. I suspect there's another false alarm, but I again feel like up there somewhere there's another big poop. I've been wrong before, I could be wrong again. In America, a cigarillo is a small cigar. That's true, Bob UFO. But I have long been in the habit of calling my cigarettes cigarillos or rillos or rills. I don't do so much anymore, but I used to refer to them as such all the time. In reality, neither France nor the Congo, I'm sure, refers to cigarettes as cigarillos. I was just making that up. The French probably call them Le Chiffre, and the Congo people probably call them cigarettes.
But I don't know. What do I look like? Some kind of language person? No. I only know one language. And that language is English. And a little bit of Spanish. Would you rather get rid of your hat or eat your cat? I'd rather get rid of my hat, obviously. <laughs> I don't want to eat my cat. Even if I, even if I don't even want to eat somebody else's cat. Even just a stray cat, you know. It's like, that's not a kind of meat I eat. I bet they're not yummy. But, you know, you and I kind of have different bets. I mean, maybe if I was starving or something. But... No, I wouldn't eat a, a dead cat just so it doesn't go to waste. <laughs> Why are you eating that dead cat? Well, I don't want it to go to waste. Ew. <laughs> <laughs> no, I would not do that. Yay, I'm glad you subscribed, Sarah. Thanks, Sarah. You're a gentlewoman, a scholar, and a reader of fine literature. Meow. Meow. I don't think Asians really eat dogs, sir. I think it's a bit of a myth. Ah. <sighs> well, I'm glad I ate the rest of that food. I think I'm gonna take a couple of these. Benadryls for uh, yes, they do. Okay, should I take Benadryls with all the other? I mean, you take Benadryl just to clear your congestion. I don't think it's gonna put you to sleep because you're on that. No, no, um, I take these just for the congestion. Yeah, I uh, my eyes are watery too. Mm. South Korea said they stop eating dogs by 27 or 28. Well, good for them. The goals. It's good to have goals, yeah. Yeah. They did in some places, like Cambodia and Vietnam, but I think it's a special livestock kind of dog. Huh. I mean, I wasn't trying. I was just voicing what I thought was probably the case. If it's not, then it's not, you know. That's why I said I think I think that's probably a myth, but maybe it's not. If I knew, I would have said, I know, yeah. You have a pet rabbit? A special livestock dog sounds crazy. It does sound a little um, specious, right? It's like dogs are dogs. Cole Hunter's back. I see that. I see that you are back, yes. Good point, Ruben. If you're really back, prove it. Ah. I don't think the Japanese eat dogs. I feel very fairly confident about that one. I believe you're more uh, kind of uncertain Asian countries like Vietnam, Laos, etc. There used to be like a joke about Chinese eating cats. Yeah, well, cats, dogs, both, you know. 
You couldn't stay away because I'm like heroin, huh? Then your name, I recognize your name. I don't remember what our previous exchanges were like, so. Um, I'll find out now what you're like, because I don't really remember. Nobody's got to, I got to interact with somebody a few times before it sticks with me what their nya is, you know. They're good for Colorado. Yeah. Go A's. Go A's. Go Giants. Go Giants. You know, the A's in spring training are 11 and 12. That's not bad that's at not all. That's not bad at all. For a team that's not good at all. Is, uh, Jose Langelier still on the roster? Yes, he is. I Ooh, checked. good. I'm so glad. It's mostly Cambodia. Apparently, a lot of People in Cambodia eat dogs. That's unfortunate. You didn't like me very much. I was being rude. Well, that's fine. It doesn't mean I didn't like you very much. It just means maybe that you were annoying me or something. What genre is this? It's Eric genre, okay? This is 100% pure, unadulterated Eric with a little bit of Rachel to cut it periodically. <laughs> um, you got to have a high tolerance for Eric. To spend much time around this channel. Basically me living my life. Doing stuff. Talking about things. You know. Doing chores sometimes. Just discussing whatever people in the chat bring up. What do you guys think of Lewis and Clark. Explorers. Who explored. The Louisiana Territory. I think they should give. More credit to. Sacagawea. All right. There you go. I don't have any opinion on that question because I don't understand what it means exactly. You're saying, what am I? What do I think of Lewis and Clark style Lewis. explorers, the ones who explored the Louisiana Territory, or what do I think of, of what, they what did. of whether or not Lewis and Clark explored the Louisiana Territory? Is the Goat Man real? I don't know. I don't think Helen Keller is fake, but. I do want to mention my great idea for a feature film called Helen Keller, NBA Point Guard. Do you use this hat as an athletic cup part-time? Uh, I think this would be a little big for me, actually. And it fits his hat perfectly. It fits, his head my, perfectly. Yeah, it fits my head. Lewis and Clark are sick. Anyway, Helen Keller... You know, she could not either see things, nor could she hear them. So, when she learned about things, she had to either touch them, or smell them, or taste them, you know. Now, I want you to think about how she learned about penis. I, do, I don't understand. I don't understand, but I think it is. Can you put it in my hand? <laughs> what does it taste like? What are they saying about Lewis and Clark? What do they, they do? Well, according to a lot of people, Lewis and Clark are responsible for both deafening and blinding Helen Keller. <laughs> wow. She was a political extremist, Helen Keller, huh? Well, she could learn about vaginas from her own, presumably. What's eugenics? Eugenics is like this idea that only superior people should breed or something. Um, it's a it's a racist kind of old school. It's like it's it's of the time period of like phrenology where people thought that bumps on your head could tell you about who you are. Oh, really? Yeah, and there's a lot of sci pseudoscience back then that try to say, like, people of this race have this kind of head and skull and bumps, mm -hmm. and they mean this, you know. It is nonsense. Lewis and Clark explore, explored the U.S. Natives couldn't share. 
<laughs> I, I don't I know what you mean by that. Either. I don't know what you mean by that. But Helen Keller had to be faking a lot of it. Not if she was actually deaf and blind. She invented, well, she and the person that taught her Braille, or they invented Braille. She invented Braille. Yeah. And I always felt that learning about Helen Keller, Hel learning about Helen Keller and learning about Anne Frank in elementary school made me so sad. Well, you know what I can't believe is that ridiculously, you know that there are no sign language interpreters who can sign in Braille? How are the blind people going to see what the person is saying? I mean, it's 2024. They just lived here but wanted it for themselves. Uh, Lewis and Clark came and told home base what was up. Well, I mean, yes, the natives lived here and probably didn't appreciate the Americans, you know, homesteading the West, right? But, I mean, that's just how shit went down, you know? People are going to be curious, you know, like... I don't know how they treated the natives, like, but I know that they did a lot for, like, geography and cartography and that sort of stuff and just, like, books about nature and... Well, yes, Cole Hunter, that is true. They had society structured in such a way that they were doomed to lose to yeah. Western Europeans because... Ultimately, it's about agriculture and capitalism, you know. Steady, reliable agriculture is sustained by capitalizing off of it, you know. And that produces stable city-states and that kind of thing. Then, of course, you need, you need a political philosophy that's individualist in order to maximally empower individuals within a legal framework that protects individuals from other individuals, etc., all of which is predicated on the notion of legally enforceable property rights. So without any of those things, the natives, were, there's zero chance they were going to win. Even if they had guns, they wouldn't have won. No, even if they had guns, they wouldn't have won because what they lacked were was codified law, property rights, an individualist rather than a communitarian outlook, etc., you know, the the various philosophical underpinnings of civilization that need to be in place before anybody's going to win any kind of imperialism, colonialism thing, you know? You want me to watch you eat again? Well, they may have wanted that, but that's not what they got. Oh, there's three light bulbs in here. Oh, there are. Ruben and I got, yeah. Ruben and I got more than one because... Yeah, well, we need to get more light bulbs for over there anyway, so... We'll get more at the hardware store. We need to go to the hardware store tomorrow. Huh. Can you touch my forehead? Yes, you can. There you go. So, you know, life's complicated. Things happen. Ultimately, we're all better off for the triumph of civilization over pre-civilized communities. But they didn't feel that way at the time, I'm sure. Well, I mean, 
anybody who's born an American is a Native American, right? Like, is a native-born American. But <clears throat> that doesn't mean you're an American Indian. The terms American Indian and Native Americans are interchangeable, but obviously I'm a Native. I'm a Native American in the sense that I was born here. So to be a Native of America, in other words, to be an American, you have to just be born here. That's it. And that's not true just for whites, right? That's true for everybody. There's no race isn't a real thing. There's no such thing as race. It's an arbitrary category division that's predicated on some folksy notions of skin color or something, but it's not a real thing at all. It's not like you know, um whether or not you have Down syndrome, you know, that's a real thing. It's either do or don't it's binary well 7-eleven indian is a person of sikh faith well they might be hindu i'm sure a variety of different indians among 7-elevens do i think i could take a bear on in a fist fight no i don't Type is Bernie Sanders. I think he's an ENFP. Pretty sure. Could be potentially ESFP, maybe, but I think he's an ENFP. Regardless, he's TI poll or otherwise, he wouldn't have such ridiculously ill considered policy prescriptions for things. I don't think I'm FI friends stack because I'm not FE polar, TI polar, and any polar. I have a hard time believing I'm INFP. You don't seem Padawan or any venerable. This means nothing at all, but in my engagements with you, you don't seem FI. Again, <laughs> that and five bucks will get you a cup of coffee, but. Right. I think he meant boundaries, yeah. The way he used it, it makes much more sense as boundaries. Can I read something to you? And I want to get your opinion on whether you think this is correct or incorrect. Okay. It's about INFJs. Okay. It's called Ways INFJs Can Get Relief From Stress. One, reduce sensory stimulation. Do you want me to read it? Yeah, I agree that's true. Um, two, get some alone time. Sure, but I also would say about the sensory stimulation that probably there are plenty of times when reducing stress involves getting sensory stimulation. It really depends on whether you're... It's true that too much sensory stimulation will stress out an INFJ. But I think they're susceptible to other kinds of stress in the absence of enough sensory stimulation too. Like most people, most INFJs are gonna be at risk of too much, not too little. Mm -hmm. You're in a unique situation where you can just metaphysicize all the time. So you're probably at the risk for the other kind. Anyway, go ahead. What, what other kind? I mean, the opposite, where you don't, you actually sensory stimulation would make you less stressed, mm. like getting some exercise or something like that. Well, okay. Um, all right. So, ways INFJs can get relief from stress three say no to non essential responsibilities. <laughs> Definitely. 
Say no to all responsibilities, <laughs> if possible, essential or otherwise. Five, spend time in nature. Okay, well, isn't that a sensory thing? I mean, it seems like they're contradicting their first thing there. Yeah, they are. I, I'm not sure about that, actually. Do you feel that relieves your stress? No. You don't really like nature there are bugs. No, I don't like nature that there's bugs. I'm going to be a bug when I reincarnate. <laughs> Why do you think that? Because I don't like them. I like them least out of all the animals. Is it, no, a bug's an insect. Is it really yeah. like an animal? Yeah, Lou, you seem to be a lot more gardeny and kind of naturey than Rachel. Well, I think tending to the weed plants we get will be nice. Like I used to tend to my rose garden, but that's I was in her. I couldn't do things that I wanted to do when I was in Franklin Square. So one of the things that my dad and I came up with was planting roses in the garden and I would take care of them. <coughs> so I guess <coughs> it's just, I don't know. I mean, that's the thing with you also is you like me are entering into a time of your life where you get to decide how you want it to be. Yeah. You don't have anybody forcing a bunch of shit on you. Or whatever. You're not in a horrible situation like we were at my dad's house, etc. So, like, I just recently feel like I came out of that year's worth of yeah. future shock. You're probably on a similar time frame, you know? Mm -hmm. We'll see what you actually end up being like when you aren't being forced in all directions by all different parts of life. Let's see. It might take time. Okay. Um, okay. <coughs> Six. Exercise. <coughs> exercise. Again, a form of sensory stimulation. Seven. Journal. I mean, I think you'd probably like it if you got in the habit. I know. If but I get into the habit. I, I don't know. know if you, I don't know. You'd have to get into the habit. I'd have to get into the habit. Yeah, I... Every time I journal, I enjoy it. Um, get less serious. I don't think you're too serious. I mean, you're 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 fretful. You're unnecessarily fretful about things lots of times, but I don't think you're too serious. Um, that's what I have only three words. <laughs> Avoid. Advice givers. Hmm. Avoid advice givers. I agree with that. Yeah. Okay. Unless that advice giver is me. But I, I don't give you advice until, unless you ask for it. Yeah. I, that's how I like to function. Because I do, when I do need advice, I do go to you for... I guess every once in a while I give you unsolicited advice. Not very often. Like I earlier when you when you were talking about cooking the water for the tea. I needed help. I didn't... I wasn't sure exactly. I know my steps for how I make a cup of noodles. I wasn't sure how to... Like, what steps to take for tea. Even though it's simpler. XX Ford XX says, say I dare you, you won't. Well, I'd have to know what I would what I would be daring you to do before I would dare you to do it, you know. Okay. Um, I don't remember what number I was up to, but the next one for INFJs under stress. Find a healthy sensory hobby. I 
Mm. I don't know what to make of that. And maybe that's what your makeup is. Yeah, it is. You know, you make up your clothes. Yeah. That is very sensitive to me. Seek counseling. You don't need counseling. That that runs afoul of avoid advice givers. <laughs> this thing has a couple things that contradict itself. Vent. Yeah, I mean, you have a tendency to feel like you can't express any negative stuff. Probably a good idea. It's probably good advice. Do some light problem solving. Oh, <laughs> I'd rather if there's problems that need to be solved. That yeah, I, I'll show you. I'll show everybody here some light problem solving. No. Okay. <laughs> no, this has been a problem because I didn't fix it right in the first place. Okay. Oh. <laughs> this. I put this weather strip in here, and it's a little bit too thick. I got a little bit too wide of a size, so when I close the door to lock the deadbolt, I have to push on it and then lock the deadbolt, you know? But Rachel got sick of me not fixing this problem, which I still haven't fixed, and so she decided to fix it with this brilliant idea here. <laughs> And then now I gotta show you guys guys this because it's it's fun. Now when you look at it from outside, you can see these holes here. <laughs> well, that's a good way to get me to fix it properly, right? You can see the holes. It didn't help at all, of course, because it's it's one of those things where it's the whole length of it. It's not just where the where the deadbolt and the ore thing go into. It's the whole thing of it is keeping it too far out this way. So, you know, a little light problem solving from Rachel <laughs> is also a little light problem creating for Eric sometimes. Uh, granted, again, I couldn't even possibly blame her about it because I had failed to fix this problem. I'm sure she was sick of me not fixing it and being a well, problem. I just you know? was sick of it being a problem. Like I was, I felt weak. I had to like push myself so, so hard against it to, to lock it. It's just, it's not convenient anyway, right? It's like the door should work properly. Like when we close it, it should latch every time. When we turn the thing, it should just lock right away. We shouldn't have to push on it. We didn't, it, we didn't have to push on him when we first moved in here. Um, the thing is, our cats destroyed the, the old weather stripping. Yeah. So I had to replace it because it looks so terrible. But I still haven't done it properly. Huh. You want to see my wife, Rachel? She's right here. Hello. Uh, no. The DEA has never kicked my door in. Thank you very much, Jacksonville Kid, for your once again needlessly provocative Mia. Hi, young man. Uh, hi, young man, Ocean. Sandy. The truth is, my mobile phone number is listed on every one of my videos. It's easy to find. No, that you're not going to do. Obviously. And in fact, now, such an odd... now you're going to get hidden. Because that's just so overtly disrespectful. Yeah, it really is. That I'm just not going to tolerate it. thing is I do tolerate a lot of shit directed at me when you bring Rachel into it I have much lower tolerance for it so 
So, you know, there's a... There's a, a sort of kind of, a kind of provocation that is what I call a uh, cucky weakness where people don't want to deal with me directly or can't or whatever. They can't attack me in any successful ways or provoke in any meaningful ways. So they try to bring Rachel into it. That is the ultimate in cucky weakness, you know? I'm right here. Deal with me directly. Don't be a coward. Um, feelings can be subtle and elusive to pin down, Padawan. Do you think that's a self-valuing thing? About the self not needing attending to? Or does it come from somewhere else? I like the assumption. I don't think that was their assumption. They... I was informing them that they could get my number anytime. But then they said, I want to talk to your wife, which means they really wanted her number, right? So, obviously, we're not going to give them that, and they can go fuck themselves. You need to draw more aggro so you can tank for the party. He's too Sigma for that. <laughs> Right. The thing is, I, I'm never going to successfully draw aggro people here because they're going to, they want to, they want to fight and win, right? But if they fight, they will lose. The only thing they can do then is devolve to trying to attack Rachel or something, at which point they get hidden and it's like they just basically admitted, I couldn't hang, so... You know, I let my frustration just take me to the lowest, lowest kind of dirt and tried to throw pig shit at you from my wallow hole. Well, you're just going to get hidden immediately. <sighs> the thing is, I don't identify with any of those labels, okay? I don't identify as Sigma. Alpha, Beta, Chad, any of those things. I'm just Eric. I'm just a regular guy living his life, YouTubing, and talking to a variety of people about skibbity things. Skibbity bombaclats, skibbity gats, lots of that kind of conversation. There have been plenty of people in the past, though, who have suggested it used to be a fairly, for a certain time anyway, at the beginning of my relationship with Rachel, it was a fairly common angle of attack that somehow I was controlling her. Yeah. And, uh... Sort of. But I've been told by an astrologer like uh, if you sh sure you have this great like marriage aspect if you stay with him he controls you forever you will be his do you really want that to be your life like what the fuck like <laughs> right I, I never have controlled her at all I never took her phone, never told her who to talk to, what to do. You know, it's like, I'm not, I'm just not, I don't roll like that. No, I'm not don't. interested in being controlling. Yeah, the groomer attack vector. That's a great name for it, Nicholas Watson. Thank you for, uh, for naming it nicely. Of course, she was 34 when we got together. Yeah. What would I be grooming her for? <laughs> you know, a relationship with me? Yes, I was grooming her for a relationship with me. We were both adults and we were both single. And 
It's not like I was even robbing the cradle. She was 34 already. Yeah, you had said that you were looking for someone who was... Over 30. Yeah. I wasn't going to date anybody in their 20s. I made that explicitly clear when I got single again, you know? And it's not my fault that Rachel looks good for her age. <laughs> you know? That's not... What am I going to be like, ah, I know you're actually 34, but you need to look more wrinkly or something. <laughs> no, I'm not going to be like that. Patrick James, you just got yourself mad. Well, at least put you on about a 30-minute timeout. No, in fact, the thing is, Fly Guy... When I got single again and I said, okay, I'm looking for a new girlfriend, I actually was very familiar with Rachel from, you know, live streams and comments on my music and stuff. And I actually checked out her channel and I looked at a video she had on her channel and I just immediately was like, nah, this girl's too young. She's like 26, maybe. You know, I just, I, I just could tell by the way she looked that she was definitely too young for me. So, <coughs> I <clears throat> moved on looking other things. But then, she hired me to type her. And in that typing session, she made it clear to me that I don't remember exactly the context of how, but something she said made it clear to me that she was, like, 34. Maybe she just told me directly. I don't remember. But, um... It didn't really hit me during the typing session, but then after the typing session, I'm like, hold on. That chick's super cool, and and she's actually oh, a lot older than I thought. And then, sometime after that, I said, here's how I'm going to get us to have our own conversation. I'm going to ask her to, uh, to read my tarot cards for me. And I did. Then we had, you know, a video conference. She read my tarot cards. We kept talking, you know. Pretty soon we made plans for her to come out to LA. To visit. By the time she... Even before she got to LA, I was I was in love with her. By like our third or fourth conversation, I was in love with her. I never felt any kind of emotional just like blizzard of limerence before. And now we're married. What do you think about that? Now it's like over four year, four and a half years later or so, and we're married. You know, we had our wedding here. Her parents were both here. They were both happy that she was marrying me. Her dad gave her away. Her mom thanked me for giving everything, giving Rachel everything she deserves. That's what her mom said to me. And this is the mom that had disowned her for mm -hmm. going with me not that long before. So... You know, pretty validating moment, really, I think, for both me and Rachel. Pretty good stuff. And really a pretty romantic story, you know.
Now we live together, we play music together, we live stream together, we do all kinds of stuff. That beeping sound is his phone. Yeah, somebody texted me something. I uh, I don't know what it said exactly, but uh, <clears throat> I can't check my text without disconnecting from the stream, at least temporarily. So I'll check it later. I suspect it's just some, you know, one of those things. One of those kind of things that sometimes I get from people. Sometimes people will launch like this concentrated campaign of even uh, calling me from a lot of different fake numbers text me from a bunch of different fake numbers or whatever. This kind of stuff happens. It's no big deal. I don't use my phone that much for anything except live streaming. So it's easy for me to just turn it off and be done with it if anybody's bugging me. Uh, Anybody who needs to get in touch with me can get in touch with me through Rachel. You can email me. I'm not a huge phone fan, you know? I like my laptop on the big screen so I can see things easily. I can use a cordless mouse and keyboard. I don't have to squint. I don't have to Try to push small letters with my fat fingers. That's one of those things. I'm definitely not a smartphone native. Like my daughter is just lightning fast with her thumbs. Typing shit into a, a phone. It's crazy to watch. But I, when it comes to writing things on my phone, I'm very slow. I'm like, poke, poke. <laughs> I hate it. I try to use voice to text when I can, but it's spotty, you know. Hmm. Well, well, well. I'm actually feeling a little bit tired. You know, like maybe I will be able to go to sleep before too late tonight not anytime very soon but not forever from now it's already 9 42 got kind of late kind of fast Taylor, Taylor cat boy it is my birthday party today wow congratulations i hope you have a wonderful birthday um or maybe it's your birthday party today, but your birthday was actually yesterday or something like that. In which case, I hope you have a wonderful birthday party. That could explain why you phrased it that way. I'm super obsessed in gathering knowledge super fast and change my obsession with the drop of a hat. Well, just wait till you get obsessed with Calvin Klein's obsession. It's hard to stop being obsessed with obsession when your obsession is obsession. Then you're kind of really tied in there, you know, stuck with being obsessed. If we define everything you do 
as obsession, Pat a long range bender, then you're always way too obsessed. And I think that's a fair, a fair critique of you, based on my, based on my definition. Okay. Taylor is live as a backup now. They were just discussing astrology. I've smelted Eric. A friend of mine sprayed it on puke and kind of ruined it. I'm assuming you mean that it ruined the scent of the obsession for you and not ruined the smell of the puke, which you were enjoying. I'm assuming. The former, not the latter. Jen, Ken, hello. What is up? Not much. I am up currently, but won't be forever. As I feel the stirrings of tiredness within my heart. And I have an awareness that sometime this evening, I'm going to go to bed. Also, I am remembering now. I need to finish all of the brackets before tomorrow morning. So I need to do that too this evening. I could sort of do that while streaming a couple of them without getting too distracted. I can do the women's because the women's is so chalky. I just do the, I, I say, okay, auto, auto chalk it for me. And then I just make a couple of changes. In this tournament, it's a lot more complicated to pick. You ever huffed anything before? Oh, I've huffed my fair, fair share of things. I've huffed... I mean, it depends what you call, call huffing. Is like nitrous huffing? I've huffed... Too much nitrous and harmed myself. I have so much nitrous, I harmed myself. Um, but uh, I'm mostly recovered from that now. Why would you care? It would be the same as coming in to say skibbity. Why would you care about what? I'm not sure why you told us this three times, Padawan Range Bender, but I'm assuming it was some sort of repetition error. Okay. Goodbye. Your gross sexual stuff is not welcome here. Do you know what time um, the LCD sound system show is? Uh, no. I could For some Google reason, it. I put it on a calendar at 7. I think I was just putting it as a random time because 7 yeah, sounds probably. early. LCD sound system bend organ concert Let's see what it says about it 7 p.m oh but they may have an opening act or something i don't know i don't, know I don't see any other band name there no i'm i don't think it is I mean, maybe there are. There usually are. I don't... There wasn't... When I saw them... 
I mean, it says 7 o'clock. I think it's going to be 7 o'clock. Cool. This is so Hannah Debt. I wonder what Hannah Debt is. I, I don't know what Hannah Debt is. Yeah, I can't. It, Google doesn't even have anything for hand or debt. So I have no idea what that is all about. Hainer. Hainer Duke. I still don't know what it is. Um, well, this is the whole face world, Insta book, social world, because I'm big on autonomy and like privacy, but I couldn't resist the learning opportunity this chat entails. Well, I mean, it's nice to hang out with people who are, you know, of a like-minded worldview. It's not that easy for people like us to find like-minded people in our geographic circles, you know? Yeah, everybody's saying that I'm Sigma today. So good for me. I get to be Sigma, apparently. I'm glad that you achieved that status. Yeah. This happened to me earlier too, Eric, with the triple posting. It was when I was on the road and I could only see my post once. I see. I was talking about your new viewership with CJ in Taylor's dream. CJ said he hated the titles and thumbnails, so he wouldn't visit. Well, I mean, he hasn't visited in a long time, ever since I typed him as ISFJ. So I somehow doubt that his not visiting here really has much to do with that. That's fine, obviously. I never have expectations. You know? Well, I mean, that's plausible. ESFJ is plausible. I think he's an ISFJ, but ESFJ is... I, it's conceivable that I would have mistyped him as an ISFJ if he were an ESFJ, but I don't really think he's ESFJ. He seems too intuitive for that. Uh, Bomba Clat Crecky Krug. Interesting. <laughs> no. I would not date any woman except my wife, who <laughs> I'm married to. So, there you go. That would be a somewhat traumatizing experience, Padawan Range Bender. Yeah, I know. I'm incredibly bigoted. I uh, only want to have a sexual relationship with my wife. How much more bigoted could I be? I'm bigoted against everybody but my wife. Hmm. What a bunch of crack. How do I feel about gay people? I don't have any opinion about gay people or straight people. I treat individuals like individuals. I'm not concerned with what group label, you know, they have. I'll deal with them as individual human beings, whoever they are. Bigots and parsley dip. <laughs> it does sound kind of like a food. You're right, Boba Fett. I like that. Well, thanks, Schwag. Um, 
I... The fact that you respect that suggests you've got good taste in positions. Because that's my position on it. And it's the correct position. Ergo, if you like it, you have good taste in positions. <clears throat> Smooth criminals here. How am I doing? I am doing quite well, thank you for asking. How are you doing? Are you doing better than, say, Mark Wahlberg? He seems to be doing pretty well. Yeah, I saw he was featured in another movie recently. Really? Yeah. That's good for him. Yeah, good for him. <laughs> but um, everything oh, is wrong because of Ben Affleck. Everything is wrong because of Ben Affleck. <laughs> what, what did it say? What was the exact word? No, it was it? like um, everything is in that is wrong in this world is because of Ben Affleck. Right. Everything that is wrong in this world is because of Ben Affleck. That's a post Johnny put up on I guess the gram today. Yeah. He likes to use the gram more than he likes to use YouTube. I disapprove. He, um, he wanted to do a TikTok because he likes engaging with fans, but like he said that they won't let him. I wonder what happened. I don't know. Uh, I want him to let me interview him. I want you to interact with him. I just heard one of y'all fart. Oh, hell no. <laughs> well. Okay, thank you for the... I, I did not hear this, Enderpig. No, but, I would have said if I did. Um, If I didn't hear it, and I didn't fart myself, it seems unlikely that you heard it. Yeah, I did. By this camera, this phone's not so great. Uh, not so great microphone. Oh, it was a joke. Oh, my mistake. I thought you were deadly serious. <laughs> Thank you for the $2, by the way. Enderpig. I like your name, Enderpig. I like it a lot better than beginning or pig. All right, you have a good night, too. <laughs> mm -hmm. Enderpig likes to go to streams, drop two bucks. Leave a fart joke and say goodnight. <laughs> people use YouTube in different ways, you know. Some people stream because they like to talk a lot, like me. Some people just like to listen. Some people chat in the stream. Um, <laughs> he does that, you know. More power to him. I am going to try to keep track. Uh, where's his mom's idea of bingo cards for this? Is an excellent one. Sigma would be on the bingo card. Mm -hmm. Would be on one of the bingo cards. You know, old man, grandpa, uh, we could have the growing knee you know, represented on this bingo card as well. We would, that one's going to be easy to get, right? If you got, um, would you rather watch grass grow or a knee? You know, uh, <laughs> is that your daughter? Great. Thank you. Bom That's another one, yeah. Bomba clots for sure. Yeah. You, yeah. You, he beat you to it. Winston's mom. Um, uh, there, I think there should be a special one for meds. Any reference of he's lost his meds. Grandpa forgot to take his meds. That one um, should be included. It's different than just grandpa. Now, the point about a bingo card is that you, you mark off the things that pop up, right? So if you're watching a live stream and you wait for somebody in the chat to say 
somebody come get grandpa. He's lost his meds again. Send me about meds. Then you would, you would check that off of your bingo card. You've got that square done. And you have a, a lot of these things, the bingo cards be printed in variations of them so that, you know, you have enough more things than there are spaces on the bingo card that you could have plenty of variations. This is an upgrade to the crazy cowboy who treated his dream like a dictatorship. Well, Austria, Hungary, 1899. We try not to be like a de dictatorship around here. Um, launch code. Yeah, we've heard launch code a few times. A few different. I think that may have been the same guy, though, actually, who was talking about launch code. Uh, obviously, GAT would be on the list if I didn't say that one already. Um, and can you do the gritty? That would be one. Mm -hmm. Can you do the thug shake? Yep. That That's would be I mean. one. Um, oh, I'm edging right now. That That's one. Yeah, that's another one. Well, I appreciate you saying that. The Gregory and the Sky song will go viral on the YouTube shorts. But, I mean, normally I make my shorts 15 seconds or less. I'm not sure. Oh, yeah, Meth Addict, thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Crackhead. Crackhead. Forget that. Uh, we could get, we could have um, Homeless slash uh on government assistance get a job would be different yeah mewing in ohio yeah mewing in ohio <laughs> right um, <laughs> uh well we could we could think of more i'm sure these are all things that should be on the binge it. Who, whose house did you squat? That would qualify among the homeless government assistants, right? Um, you're squatting or um, also, I think one of the things that would be on there would be like um, pedo, you look like a pedo, things like that, right? Stop smoking. Stop yes. smoking. Correct. I care about your life. <laughs> Stop smoking. I care about your life. Yeah. Um, you're bald. You get your bald sometimes. Mm -hmm. That would be a more obscure one. That's a good one. Lotus. You're right. Not how many teeth you have, but what happened to your teeth? Yeah. And, but you just put teeth on the bingo card. You know, you don't need the full teeth? explanation. Yeah, that's of true. It. Yeah. Uh, what's on that plate? <laughs> <coughs> yeah. If I put this plate here, what's on that plate is going to definitely be commonplace. What's on that plate? Um... When are you getting a toupee that follows generally under the bald category? My bald's pretty low on the belt. You look sad. <laughs> yeah. Are you lonely? You look sad. What's wrong? Is something the matter? Uh, we'll get for Rachel. Blink twice if you need help. Yeah. <laughs> that one. <laughs> That's funny. It's fun. Uh, anything about my weight, yeah. Um, yeah, attack on Rachel's physical appearance of some sort, yeah. Actually, the, yeah, the okay. worst, the worst kind of <laughs> bullshit, you know. But, uh, something about trouble, yes. What do you think about being gay? Have what don't forget about yes. Palestine or Israel, yes, Palestine or Israel. 
my gosh, of course. Yeah. We're at Padawan Range Bender at B2 for just a spec. Okay. Hello, Gramps. Oh, if you've got Gramps on got your you got Gramps on your bingo card, check it off. Is there an app that lets you like make bingo cards like that for for say a live stream? Friends, bingo for friends. I mean a, a bingo card live stream app, you know, like that uh you you put it, I guess it's like basically it wouldn't have to be specific to live streams, but you put it I put a link, everybody gets their random bingo card from the set on a, like in a separate tab or whatever. And then um every time I check something off the master bingo card, it correctly it does your checking it off for you, you know. Um someone should definitely make that. Right, that's a good idea. Yeah, right? that's a really good idea. And you can cut. You just put in the terms you want for your bingo card. What a fun game! That sounds like a lot of fun. So, could somebody code that? I don't know how to do that sort of thing. Anybody know how to do that? Maybe we'll keep asking about it and see if anybody knows how to do it. It doesn't sound that hard, really. There may be something kind of like it that exists, but I'm not sure. flat earth box we don't get a lot of flat earth around here uh i mean the thing is it's nothing you're gonna be it's, there can't be any physical component to it right because the only way to do this properly is for everybody in the live stream who clicks the link to get a unique bingo card that's an example of the same set of possible terms right <laughs> so like if we had jesus on the bingo card would this count as jesus <coughs> this would count more as hilarious joke i think than proselytizing I think you could do even better with that by saying, Jesus died for your sins. And I hope that eats you alive because he is never coming back. King David can say whatever. Yes, I do own a firearm. I have a rifle. How to host a virtual bingo game. Okay. That's plausible. I will check it out. I'll watch that later myself. Jesus loves you. He just doesn't love you as much as most people. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus loves you. He loves all of us. He doesn't love you as much, but he still loves you. Is that a song? Yeah. It sounds familiar, but... Really? When, yeah, when, it, who's it by? LCD sounds... Before, I'm sure it <laughs> That explains it. How can a dead person love you? I'll tell you. It's called a living trust. Actually, though, I'm not sure if you would have heard it as an LCD sound system song. Because it would have been, if Corey would have been, it was not an album that Corey didn't listen to. Well, he's not the only person I encountered LCD sound system around. Oh, yeah. really? Well, I mean, sure, I well, back, I don't know how long ago it came out, but back when I was younger and I used to hang out with friends and stuff, we had music on and shit. Maybe somebody else was into that song. I don't know, the song sounds familiar to me. It's, I'm pretty sure I've heard it before. You probably did. I just... It just... Sure the, it, 
those two I, words together, those two words together as a song lyric, that sounds very familiar to me. It came out in 2017. Oh, 17? Yeah. Well, I mean, that's too recently for me to encounter it like that. Yeah. Maybe I have never heard it before, but this, the, the term, is it, did the term exist before the song? Emotional haircut? Um, or did they coin that term? I think they kind of coined it. Okay, well, because so, that term sounded very familiar to me. Um, That's cool. I like that. People don't stop being when they die, says Ivar. But my answer to the question, how can a dead person still love you, is a living trust. You know? They make sure in creating a living trust for the estate that they pass down to you, that the government doesn't rob you blind with inheritance taxes. Now, that's love from beyond the grid. And I appreciate my dad's ongoing love. He may be dead, he may be in a box in the garage, but he still loves me. My mom, too. I don't mean to, to take from her any role in the estate. She certainly contributed to it plenty. So, anyway... A great instrument, a great legal instrument, living trust. Wonderful, even. It's not that cold out. It's just not wrong. It's pretty chilly, but it's not really that cold. Out. It's it's warm enough that I can just have uh, this jacket on and be fine. Pretty cool to see how big Jesus' head was. It was just a regular sized head. Rachel may be listening to emotional haircut. As you can meet any person in the past. Who has died? Who would it be? Hmm, that's a good question. If I could meet any person in the past who's died. Um, I mean, the reason it's such an interesting question is because you want someone who's interesting to talk to. Not just, say, a great artist. Like, Mozart, great artist. Not sure how interesting to talk to he would have been there, really. Get somebody like Leonardo da Vinci, who's who's uh, got all kinds of things going on, right? You know, he's inventing things, he's painting things. Oh, I lost a light bulb. He's, uh, you know, sculpting things, whatever else he did. A bunch of shit, right? He might be an interesting guy. And I'm assuming I'm having a translator at my disposal, right? I can choose non-English-speaking people. 
and anticipate being ha- able to have a conversation with them. If I don't get a translator, then I'm limited to just the English speaking world. Uh, but if I get a translator, you know, it might be cool to really like, like go very alien and not just choose somebody from a long time ago, but like from ancient China or something. That would be a weird conversation. Would you even have enough common conceptual ground to have a conversation even with a translator? I don't know. You might have to have a translator from ancient Chinese to later Chinese and a translator from later Chinese to English just so you can bridge the conceptual gaps. Um, You know, probably Kant, Immanuel Kant would be relatively interesting to talk to, but I feel like I needed to teach him stuff from my modern perspective that it answers a lot of the sort of confusions of trying to even, even attempting to do a critique of pure reason, you know, without kind of a contemporary operationalized debate frame for language, which I don't think Kant really He didn't, he wasn't able to frame what he himself was doing as a manner of attention, for example, and he wasn't able to frame his kinds of argumentation as distinct from other kinds of argumentation. He wasn't able accordingly to set up what appropriate criteria would be for success, sort of, et cetera. So I feel like if I had a conversation with Kant, I just need to tell him things rather than listen to him because I don't have anything to learn from him. I've already, I've already come to understand all his conceptual ideas as expressed in his books, although I haven't read them in full. So he wouldn't be very interesting to talk to. Genghis Khan. Right, well, I mean, like, Karma's Pimp, what you, what do you, if you mean something there, then you agree with me. In other words, if you expect me to feel as though I've understood what you mean, then you mean something specific by those terms. And if you mean something specific by those terms that I can not use myself to draw distinctions, then you're relying entirely on subjective stuff. And you're that to the extent that something's fully subjective is non communicable. So, you know, you can not like it if you don't want to, but it is a necessary precondition to doing things with language that are purposeful, uh, purposeful argumentation. I mean, obviously, I can say, hey, can you? bring me a cup of coffee, that's, you know, not even the point of that. I'm not sure what you're talking about. No heads, but they feet still glide step to, I don't know what all that is. Hit the floor, leave your nugget on the table and kick step. When you do kicks off, you're dead. Your legs might fall off. The whole time, I can't believe I can't conceive. I don't want to leave. Skibbity, dop, dop. Yes, yes. Skibbity, skibbity. Okay, Anager. You do your thing. You be the Anager of your own butt. Team Janeway. I'm not sure what that... Is that a Star Trek person? Like... 
Wasn't she like the doc, Dr. Janeway on Star Trek? Is that what you're referring to? Where's my water? I'm going to drink some more water. I still have cotton mouthy meow, meow taste. Well, I'll tell you what, manager, we will do a poll. Oh, she was the captain? Okay. Am I skibbity? What does skibbity mean? Does it mean like yeah? I don't know exactly what it means. What does skibbity mean? Describe oh, someone who's yeah. evil or bad. Okay, that's good to know. Now I know how to vote. Okay. Yeah, I I did think it had a, a generally negative adjective meaning. Like this darn whatever, you know, skibbity toilet. But No, I did the wrong thing. Oh, what'd you do? I voted the wrong way. It's okay, darling. It essentially means nothing when used as a verb, adjective, etc. It's just an inside joke from a section of a parody song. So it means evil or bad, but it's uh it's also used to mean other things as well, I guess. I'm sorry about this morning, but I'm not feeling much better today than yesterday. My mark is on the back of the president of the, my office at work on Earth. I hope that clears up subjective stuff. Okay. Not have, I don't have any idea what you're talking about, but that's fine. Don't reduce yourself to skibbity. I don't care. <laughs> I've already been, I did a poll before where I asked whether I'm a wolf stinker. All I could think of is Scooby-Doo Buddha. He's that song. He's like, I'm a scat man. You go Scooby-Doo. Scooby-Doo bop 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 bop. Yeah, like something like that. The scat man. Hmm. Yes, she is, Patrick James. You are correct. James. I'm a lucky man. I feel like a lucky lady. Thanks, Rachel. You're a sweet talking girl. Only to you. Sweet talking guy. Talking my kind of life. Don't you believe in him? If you do, I'll make you cry. Oh, Bro is a hundred percent gay. I am a hundred percent gay for my beloved wife, Rachel. I just feel like it's not right because we have two distributors. <laughs> what? Uh, I deleted his comment. Oh, uh, that's fine. You do what you want. Embrace the Skibbity Toilet. The lore goes deeper than Lord of the Rings. It's on YouTube, the series. Okay, well, maybe I will research it further, all right? I was driving around town with the girl I love going scaba db 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 That was just a troll. Okay, Bobby. Somebody, took, somebody briefly took over your account, huh? Troll. I think Bobby was saying that about me. Um, I'm not. Gay, but people say that sometimes about me. You know, they say I'm gay sometimes. They say I'm skibbity. They say I'm bombaclad. They say a lot of people say I'm old. A lot of things people say. Some of them true, some of them not true. Gay, that one's not true. But I don't worry about it because, uh, you know. What ifs? People say that. 
I'm not going to say that, you know. I, uh, oh, it's okay. Somebody apologize for calling me a pervert yesterday, Bush Campson. Uh, it's fine. I'm not a pervert. So, you know, I have to, uh, I mean, I'm the same kind of pervert that everybody is, obviously. I, I like to get on my wife with sexual intentions, but I just joined and he looks sad. Bingo card, anybody got, he looks sad. Are you sad? You look sad. You are sad. Any of those variants? What? It's only gay if you wear a flannel hat. Well, this isn't made out of flannel, I don't think. Is it? This isn't flannel. I don't know what kind of material tweed? this is. Tweed or something? I don't know. It may be tweed. I don't know. I don't know hats. It does look tweed. Yeah, I'm not sure what kind of material this is made out of. If someone is skibbity, do they chachinate? I don't know what chachinating is. It's not flannel, it's argyle. Argyle. Well, argyle? Is this what argyle looks like? I don't know. I think it's, uh, I, I'm going to just arbitrarily say it's paisley. Mm, Rats made kinda, you crazy. Kind of tweed. Kind of tweed, says Rachel. I like this hat too. When's his mom got it for me? I don't know. This is tweedish. It's not really like that. No, some parts are larger. I don't know what it is. But it does have that kind of diagonally cross hatchy thing. Yeah. There. So that's that's Flannel? correct. Hi, Ruben R. Calling a type of material gay is wildly offensive, is it? I don't feel wildly offended. Um, as the poll says, I am skivity. No, I chaginate. You chaginate. He, she, it chaginates. I don't know that verb, but I appreciate your willingness to conjugate it for us. What about they? Okay, I see no chaginate anywhere on the interwebs. So, I don't think chaginate's a word. Oh, chachinate. I misspelled it. That's why I got no results. Chachinate means to cackle loudly. Cachinate. 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 Well, it's so when Bomba when Bomba Clots Cachinate would be a good name for a Broadway play. I think. Do I have wrinkly balls? No. Cacinate. There's no chaginate. Okay. Cacinate. Cacinate means to cackle loudly. My balls, I, I have no way of knowing if they're wrinkly because they're inside my scrotum. I do have a wrinkly scrotum. My balls may be wrinkly, but I'm never going to be able to see them. <laughs> Fingers crossed. I'm so phantom task taxed. Okay, so phantom tax also needs to be on the, on the meow. Well, he needed to be to say that then, okay? Because he said balls. I'm so tired of crying, but I'm out on the road again. Okay, good for you. I'm the chachinator. I don't believe I cackle loudly. My aunt and my mom cackle loudly. They're known for their cackle. Rachel's got a uh, burst of laughter from her sometimes too. That's quite, uh, it's quite, you know, 
loud in a pleasing way. Yeah, I do laugh loud. Uh, but I just learned about Phantom Tax tonight, Juice 21. I understand where it came from. Yes, I, I read about it already. Once a skibbity, always a skibbity. Here we go. There, there you go. Hey, Rio Rio. So, here it's like this. Phantom tax. That's phantom taxing. And the thing is this. Why don't people yeet things anymore? That was always my favorite way to get rid of something. Yeah, simply yeet. yeet it. You know? yeah. Yeet. People no longer yeet. They no longer say YOLO. What's going on? Well, I think the things they don't say. <clears throat> they don't say golly gee willikers anymore. No, they don't. You have court tomorrow. You're on your way to Mexico. Well. Does that mean you're skipping out on court or you're going to court in Mexico? <laughs> I would presume the former. Mm. Probably he doesn't have a court date in Mexican court. If he <laughs> did, even if he did, unless it were an extraditable offense, there's no way he'd go down there and once again place himself at the hands of Mexican authority unnecessary. And if it, even if it were an extraditable offense, he would not voluntarily go to Mexico for the court they would make them extradite him. What does extradite mean? It means when one country sends one of their citizens to a different country to be tried for a crime that the person committed in that country. So like, let's say I go to Great Britain, while I'm there, I murder somebody. And then I come back here. Murder is extraditable crime, so the British government will say, we want you, please America, to arrest this guy and send him to us to try him for murder. Because even though he's not a British citizen and he is an American citizen, he committed this crime on our soil against one of our citizens and we'd like to try him in our criminal justice system. So then the United States, who has an extradition treaty with Britain, would send me to England to be tried for murder. Oh. I don't think there's a true self. There is only everything and nothing and what exists in between. <laughs> That's kind of a lot, actually. <laughs> okay. It's kind of like the whole universe there. Now I have that scat man song stuck in my head. I'm the scat man. Gender, type, sexuality are all lies by the demiurge. Okay. Um, I like Fly Guy's understanding of things. I'm not a self. I'm just the rivers and lakes and streams and mountains and wind and stars and plankton. Wow, you sound like Disney's Pocahontas. My great-grandfather led the USSR during the Obama presidency. <laughs> there was no USSR during the Obama presidency. Abraham DeLacy. Giuseppe Casey. I'm not sure I could reciprocate your statement there when you say, man, you are one funny little guy. But <coughs> I will say that <coughs> I'm not a very little guy, you know. I'm pretty big and tall and stuff. <coughs> <coughs> I feel very confident that you're probably a little older guy than me. 
good that you feel love again. I'm glad you feel love. Love's a wonderful feeling. It's like the feeling of tenderness plus the feeling of delight. What's my wrist diameter? I don't know. I've never measured it before. It's about the same. Yeah, I'm 6'5", actually. 6'4 and a half. I, I was 6'5 at my tallest. I may have shrunk a little bit as I've gotten older. I'm hair under 6'5 now. But yeah, I'm pretty tall. You know, like, I can touch the ceiling without standing on my toes. My wife, on the other hand, is 5'2", dramatically shorter than me. Mm -hmm. My balls do the same thing they've always done. They go up and down. Sometimes they're all scrunched up tight. Sometimes they hang down. It really depends on their mood, I guess. I'm assuming it's a mood-based thing. Testicular mood determines mm -hmm. whether it's, you know, all scrunched up or... Well, or, or two golf balls and an old sock. It's a lighter. What happened to Gift Gap? I know. What happened to Gift Gap? He was doing so great. You know, it actually impresses me when when people show any ability to cut their losses and, and just say, fuck this, you know, and leave. It's the people who insist on continuing to be around here, talking all kinds of shit, saying how horrible it is, but nevertheless being here and watching it all the time. That starts to get annoying because it's like okay dude fine just I get it you hate me or whatever so why in the world are you still here but some people just like to watch what they hate I guess you know and you be oh, me and my wife's favorite British person hey <laughs> I... I don't, I have to think, do I already have a favorite British person? I, I'm going to have to say, I, I'm not going to be able to commit to that right now. Because I don't want to accidentally offend the British person that I already know that I've forgotten about at the moment. A lot of times British people, and say, instead of saying they're from England or Britain, they'll say, we are from, I am from the UK. That seems to be the most popular thing to call it these days. The UK. Stands for United Kingdom. You know, given the fact that like Wales and Scotland and Ireland kind of all call themselves different countries, is it really very united? Mm. Seems a little bit more anti-united. In other words, divided. All right. Coming back in. Opinion on Joe Mama and Adolf Ballin. I don't know who they are. If the Union flag, Union Jack flag is strange. When speaking from a British person, assume they are Australian. When they correct you, behave as though you've never heard of England, Britain, or the UK. It's good advice, fly guy. What are you talking about? England. Never heard of the Ings. Have you? Anybody here ever heard of the Ings before? No. No. Eh, clearly, 
this so-called England does not exist. I think that's a rock-solid, indisputable proof that England doesn't exist. If England existed, the people who supposedly live there, supposedly live there, would be called Ings, not Brits. Am I talking about Gallia? I'm talking about how England doesn't exist, and that Britain and the UK are also lies by global elites and their attempt to brainwash us all into one world government. Ireland is actually British. I don't think Ireland sees it that way. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure how much England still has any sort of legislative slash whatever authority. If I do nothing but lie and conspire for the next 10 years, will I be accepted into the global elite? It's a good question, Oliver Winehan. Really, the question is, I guess, what, but what are the membership criteria for joining the global elite in general? Has Rachel ever smoked any dope before? You mean marijuana? She smokes a lot of weed. Yeah, I smoke every day. If you're talking about dope in the old school sense of the term, meaning like heroin, I don't yeah. think so. <laughs> no, she's not done any of that. Probably won't ever, I no. Nifty stock ended high tonight, just saying. What does that mean? What's nifty stock? I'm two days into college and I'm three lectures behind. There's this guy. Let's call him Colin. Colin. He says he wants to be mine. Okay. Who wants Northern Ireland back? England. England does? I don't know. Or Ireland does, probably. No, I'm not sure it would be Ireland. Oh. They're separate countries. However, Northern Ireland is part of the UK. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. So. So Ireland, Ireland wants, wants Northern, Northern Ireland, Ireland back. back. Hmm. My buddy Dave, you say, ah, right, man, I smoke some dope. It's a song, huh? Well, I'm unfamiliar with that song. What song? Uh, whatever he put in his message that we didn't understand or something. Oh. If you knew for a fact that the world was ending in 40 hours, would I just poop and pee in my pants until then? Well, first of all, just because the world's going to be ending in 40 hours doesn't mean I'm not still going to be constipated. So let's keep that in mind. So the tea helps with sober night or... Yeah. Yeah, I can't see Smith. I place the rains down in Africa. There you go. Gonna do some things you never have. Boom boom ba dum bum ba dum bum pa. Um, uh, hi, Natasha Godfrey Ashford. So today's pretty splendid, going pretty splendidly. I would say, um, more splendidly than, say, the day of 
whomever in Alanis Morissette's ironic. Because she was having the kind of day where it was like, it's a free ride when you already paid. Yeah, Weezer did ruin it. Like That album was such a bad idea. Yes, I've been in bands before. Half of the stuff is in the British Museum, and I want some stuff back. Huh. Why don't you just go in there and say... Uh, excuse me, this is mine. Where did you get it? Mr. Play It Safe is afraid to fly. Yeah. Back to suitcase. There's Down on You from the Theater with Dave from Full House. Yeah, I, I've heard of that. I heard that earlier when I was talking about that one. Because... Obviously, um, obviously, we all need to know the answer to the question. What you go down on your Yeah, would she, Dave? What's his name? Um, his name is uh, Guy from Full House. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, she was with uh, Ryan Reynolds for a while, too. Who was? Alanis Morissette. Alanis Morissette? Yeah, I believe huh. so, yeah. I don't go to Walmart. Uh, I have an number yeah, of hats. Steve Would you like me to put on a different hat? Or, you know what? I will put on an even cooler hat than this one. Okay. A cooler hat than you, sir, will ever have if you spend your whole life collecting cool hats. This hat. All right. It even matches my shirt. So, obviously, I'm incredibly cool. I've got that cool hat and this cool hat. They got engaged, Alanis Morissette and Ryan Reynolds. Well, isn't that ironic? <laughs> that is an even cooler hat. Yes, it is. It's an OG Johnny hat. Yes, I play instruments. I play the guitar, I play the bass. Um, this is a signed Johnny hat. Okay, it's got Johnny's signature right there. So it's pretty cool. Pretty darn cool. Play my guitar. Oh, very well. I will play something quick on the guitar. I'll just make something random up there. I feel like playing a song. Really. They say he's a smooth criminal, but I think he's not. Because I think that he's a bumpy, regular kind of guy. I hear he's a smooth criminal, but I've never encountered anyone as bumpy as this man to think instead he's a regular guy. <laughs> Oh, sure, he made your sister cry when he didn't show up for the prom. But that wasn't smooth at all. And also, it is. Isn't 
I made it, we got it, nearly made it, I hate it, all the time, I got 16 hours to town, a good guy that never takes this long, I have not changed these strings. I mean, I changed one or two of the strings since I got the guitar. I'm so skibbity. I am so skibbity. I'm so skibbity. You never met nobody quite as skibbity. As skibbity as me, they call me. Skibbadiah, yeah, they call me Skibbadiah. Every Tuesday I go down to the town. I see Skibbity Bomber class fucking around. I say Skibbity Bomber class, beware of my ribs. Then I show them my gear just like this. Yeah, huh. When Marius come rolling down the street, everybody say, look at their Sigma Giga challenge his feet. They say, What's good Bomber Clyde could deny when you see the breeze of this guy as he walks and flies and scries and scries and you could tell when he's smashing everything. If mashing everything is laying all the time cause clearly this guy's got a lot of risk because of his what? Because of his gap. A man should not have a gat, says Squiggle's jaw, for some reason. Look, I'm going to have as much of a gat as I want to have, okay? So don't you let me know. All right. Yeah, boy. Gerald has the thought. Gerald has a lot. Gerald has a plot to get to Marjorie's tater tots. Move this. Gerald has a thought. Gerald has a thought. Gerald has a plot. Gerald has a thought to get to Marjorie's tater tots. He's got a good idea for a name change in business. Thinking now about what's a cold Christmas. When they hire his firm to change that name. Well, Gerald always thought there'd be chance enough to return to the boy who left rough. He took back to it eventually. But his visions piled up and his plan would interrupt. 
all the work that started off so hopefully. Now Zed's back on the business, thinking of changing fact list to list list. So how all the big boys shout his name? And Gerald knows he understands ever more clearly now. He won't provide explanation regarding the why or the how. He'll see you and know you from inside your heart. Exciting, delighting, Gerald plays his part. But Gerald still knew there's too much to do. And he had dropped time in the underview. Too much to rebut, no where now and what. But too much time spent in the thick in the skew. With you. Now Gerald has a plot. Gerald has a plot. Gerald has a plot. Get the margarines, tasty spots. He's got a good idea for a name changing business. Thinking now about what's called Christmas when they hire his firm to change that name. Fame. Well, Gerald has a thought. I'm not from the Netherlands. Why would I be from the Netherlands? I'm from America. I know it's getting pretty late, but it's fine. What am I looking for? This. Why am I looking for it? Because. Gonna play you this a song. Yeah, so we are. Damn it. Pure. 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 There we go. Now we're ready. I'll play this one. The last one I played much faster than I normally play it. This one I'm going to play slower than I normally play it. Well, Sam has a story that need be told, and this is the song for an open road, and such a thing must always do its job. Married up Jeb and turned 19 Four years and three kids weaned Weary now in questioning the past Agency outpaces discretion Locking in our courses Way too young The urgency comfort is really just depression Making sure those under At 21 and so forth, well up into middle age. But ones that seemed to set him free became his whole identity. Now Doug's about another drunken breach. Agency, I'm facing discretion, locking in our courses. Ooh, wow, ooh, wow, I 
rock a month with extra dexedrine. Ooh, wow, ooh, wow, mathematics to produce success or impose more unjust duress. Agency, pain says discretion. Rocking in our courses, way too young. The urgency conferred is really just oppression. Making sure those underneath them always grow. Without consent, it's really just oppression. By parasites surviving. On their wages earned by lying While they feed their fear of dying Yeah, let's feed upon The futures of the young ah, Thank you. That was pleasing to play. It's pleasing to play like Pleasing to say. Okay. Gotta play something else too. Before I wrap this string. Oh, I got, that's right. I have electricity problems. Well. I can solve that easily. Jesus was people but absent of sin He must then have struggled with regular men And women have too, and they too were present That was all where are the eye in the lesson If people were Jesus they'd know as they think And everyone's work would be true Spoken would sit where they sink, and we all know just what to do. But people aren't Jesus once they're betrayed. The easy believing forever is lost. Maybe naivete is not to be saved, but the wise pay a terrible cost. Shaken, we all have been shook, but being forsaken don't mean you're forsook. And though in the past we've been hung out to dry, we'll find them at last if we're willing to try. People are Jesus once they're betrayed. The easy believing forever is lost. Maybe naivete is not to be saved. Thanks. I think that actually came out pretty good. Uh, hard to, hard song to sing. It's got long, certain long lines of vocals that are hard to keep your breath for the whole time. I'm gonna play Parker Short Lemon Squeeze. Then I'm gonna play Second Night. Then after that, and this Parker Short Lemon Squeeze course is dedicated to Boba Fett, who loves this song so much. Mm -hmm. Oh well, he's Bunker Tart, Lemon Squeeze, the friendliest guy that 
you will see. Yes, you want to be your friend, but it comes from around the bend, and it would be a while till he sees you again. He's Bunker Tart Lemon Squeeze, he's a friend to you and me. He's International Delight's favorite go to right hand guy. International Delight can man, also busy like his friend the beaver bee. Busiest creature, busy as a bee. Busy as a beaver, and so much busier than Pucker Tart Lemon Squeeze. Well, he's Pucker Tart Lemon Squeeze, shabba doo ba da ba ba doo da. Pucker Tart Lemon Squeeze, shabba doo ba da. Yes, he's Pucker Tart Lemon Squeeze, shabba doo ba da ba ba doo da. Pucker Tart Lemon Squeeze, shabba doo ba da. And if you go to visit him for starters. He's not a fan of sugar be treats because he's Pucker Tart and not Pucker Sweet. Well, he's Pucker Tart, Lemon Squeeze, the friendliest guy that you will see. Yes, he wants to be your friend, but he comes from around the bend and it would be a while until he sees you again, Pucker Tart. Now for my last song, my last and final song. I don't need this. I just look at the chat. Thank you for your positive regard, friends. Uh, second night. It's the second night when you start to feel strange. playing that. That was nice. I was really feeling that song at that moment. You know, I don't always. It can be a tricky song. I had a 
I'm gonna play another one. It's a very, very old song. One of the first songs I've ever written that I, one of the first songs I wrote that I still play. <laughs> Second night, which was the second to last thing I played. It sounded great. But you know. Realism art. I'm not sure what realism art is. Is it different than fake fakeism art? Is it like uh photorealism, you mean like painting photorealistically? I'm his wife. My name's Rachel. She is my wife. Her name is Rachel. Maybe he wants to smile for the reminder. I don't know if I'm subscribed to you. I feel like I am. But let me just double check. You sent me a drawing to me? Cool. Is he still Ebediah's, Jebediah's Emporium? Probably, yeah. She's 39. That's not that young. I'm 52. But she looks younger than her age. I look a little older than my age, so, you know. People tend to think I'm robbing the cradle, but I'm actually not. She's almost 40 years old. Thanks, 
Thanks, Lois. Good night. Sleep well. Don't let the bread bugs bite. Remember to have sweet dreams about loving tenderness all the time. I'm going to be wrapping this up soon. I'm going to see that quite a few times. Where did I find her? Well, via YouTube. Via this channel, you know? Have I turned to God? I didn't realize I was facing away from him. So, you know, peace out over it is leaving. See you later. Thanks for being here. You are supposed to be a rich guy. Says who? Who says I'm a rich guy? Whoever said that. You mean, you must be rich because you have four trash cans. Yeah, I do. I have four trash cans. It's true. But around here, everybody has four trash cans. It's not that impressive. Hello at Flippin' Beast, and welcome to the channel. I used to start, I looked to use, I used to look younger till my bread started graying. Oh. Bread's going to gray over time. Richard Savaldson, IDK. UDK what? UDK what, what you, what you K? UDK what you K, I guess. Because you live in such a luxury place. Well, I mean, I have a nice house. It doesn't mean I'm rich. What are some comedians you like? It's not that nice of a house. I mean, it, it, it's, it's a, I love it. I don't mean to be, like, shitting on my house. I love this house. I love living here. But it's not, like, super expensive. What are some comedians you like? Well, I like uh, Edith Hall. Lifsky, I like Rachel Feinstein. I like uh, Paul Mulhaney. I like not not a ton, you know. It's difficult to be a really good uh, a really good. Comedian. Can I give you a Stephen Hawking impression? Our universe is not moving in just one direction, but will eventually return to the beginning. Can I make a happy birthday song for your friend, J.R.? The H in happy birthday stands for J. The B in happy birthday stands for R. That's because J R it is your birthday. B E A H C R H C D E A birthday. <laughs> Can you make a happy birthday song for your friend Ashton? Okay, well, Ashton. You were born on this day Some years ago, I mean not really today, today Nevertheless, it's a celebratory occasion for you Happy birthday Like that It's going fine, 420 Carlos Going better than terrible, you know 
probably be wrapping this up here pretty quick. Well, I was asked to, uh, was asked to, I just started hearing about Mr. Beast not that long ago, Emily Britton. I have no idea where Mr. Beast was on 9-11. Yeah, well, I mean, pretty much it's, it should be like one of the most common ones because you're definitely going to get that. You, there's nobody's not going to get that. Well, I'm glad. I didn't know that her day was unmade, but now that I've learned that I made it, I'm relieved to at least solve that one problem. So we're going to make your day before leaving the house in the morning. Also, I'm curious how you got your name, Luminix. It's a cool name. Susie is me. I remember this time Susie is me. Uh, I'm not, not at the moment. I'm actually kind of hungry. I think I need to make another food. And, um... Ew! Got to be caught in something. I could be a singer like Michael Jackson, true, but... I... Somehow doubt that's my ultimate destiny in life. Nevertheless, conceivable, not inconceivable anyway. She tap. Hey, squiggles. What does she tap mean? I'm not sure what she tap means. Oh, your name is she tap. What you said was Squiggles. I had it backwards. I thought your name was Squiggles and what you said was she tap. My mistake. Not 80 minutes. Eight minutes. 80 minutes is too many minutes. I forget what that is, mewing. I have to look that one up again. Is it some sort of sexual thing? I don't remember all the youth culture terms, you know. Rachel, do you remember what mewing is? Okay, so like my understanding of mewing, I also got from YouTube, and it's like this like tongue thing that you do in your mouth to make your like. Oh, this thing with your jaw. Yeah, right? yeah. Um. No, I don't think I mew. Is to put your tongue. The roof of the mouth. Yeah, yeah. it's like this, like. Thing. No, I definitely do not do that. I definitely um, do not put my tongue to the roof of my mouth. My mouth. Uh, go to sleep and stop smoking the weed. Okay. You stay awake and start smoking the weed. It's easy to get it confused with edging, I guess, which is a sexual thing. So. Yeah. That's why I asked that question, if it was sexual. It's a good thing to ask. Yeah, you never know. If you don't know what term means, you, know, you might as well ask. Where did I put the mouse? I am going to uh, indeed want to go to bed here before too long. But I'm going to eat this lasagna first. I need to get more food in my belly before I go to bed. <laughs> I'll take the five dollars. <laughs> I will take the five dollars. I'm not going to lie. But I wouldn't say the same about the USC women's basketball team. 
I would love to see they them win the national championship. College basketball is just more interesting than professional basketball in general, you know. Congratulations, Padawan. Yeah, so stop smoking weed, <coughs> go to bed. <coughs> Okay, well, I obviously didn't expect you to obey me anyway, just as I'm assuming you didn't expect me to obey you. Where's my mouse? There it is. Yeah, we've got, for the duration of this dream, from now until after I eat my lasagna. Now I'm going to wrap it up and uh, maybe, maybe fill out a couple of brackets, you know. Uh, or maybe just go to bed. I figure I'll wake up probably at like 6 or 7 anyway, which is early enough to finish filling out the brackets. Meow. Yeah. Meow. Yeah. Yes, we hear you, kitty meow. We do. Here, Rachel, why don't you fill out another bracket? You want me to auto chalk it and you can make changes? Huh. Um. Or you don't feel like it? Yeah, that's fine. I don't. I don't even know. I'll choose Houston for this one. Okay. You want me to change a few things? You don't have to do a whole bunch. Just change a few things from okay. from absolute chalk, you know. Because I'm not trying to. If you don't want to make bracket, that's fine. No, but I'm I just do. warning I you just that. Some, I feel like drained, so I don't have like I don't know. You need to eat some food. Yeah. I'll make you something after I cook my thing, okay? Okay. I'll make you a lasagna or something. But regardless, just be aware that I'm going to end up making the rest of these brackets because, um, okay. you know. That's fine. Just, so, if, if whatever brackets you want to make at all, you need to make tonight. Oh, I feel sick because I need to eat. I could beat Purdue and I mean what is that? Wisconsin beat both Purdue and uh Marquette, so they're not a bad team. Okay. But you choose whatever you want, obviously. I don't have them in my other bracket, so Kentucky or Kentucky? It's Kentucky. Yeah, it's Kentucky. They beat Baylor and BYU. What? Oh, no, I just said they beat Baylor. Yeah, and I'm going to go with them because I don't think that I did. Yeah. Yeah, okay. 
Texas Tech. Versus Florida. Do you want a lasagna? Rachel? Uh, yeah, sure. Do you, do you want it or not? Yes? Uh, or you... maybe I'll have my rice. Is there no one? Okay, here we go. Oh, do you want your sandwich? Oh, yeah, my sandwich would be good. No, whatever. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, I think I'm done. All right, just put it in that bracket. Oh wait, I just need the numbers. Okay. Yeah, okay, gotta put it in that bracket. All right, cool. Oh, well, I got my food ready to eat. Which means we are not long from the end of this live stream. Good. I will get ahead of that marijuana. You are right. Um, I want to make four teas. Oh, God. It's so hard, though. I want to go with the chalk each time. <laughs> well, I didn't touch you anyone. Here. I didn't know you wanted to do it. Sorry. Here, start with no, chalk. No, no, I wasn't, I wasn't, All right. I and just decided in like a, like and thought it. And here you go. Okay, so I'll have Purdue learning this one. Oops. Hmm. Where do I change it up? I don't remember. Lasagne. Yes, I'm having lasagne. But before I eat it, it needs to cool down a little bit. I need to cut it up some. Hot as the Dickens, I tell you. This is hot as the Dickens. Yowza, you might say. Milagros LeBilt, LeBwit, old man. Hello, Uglu. Okay, thank you, Milagros.
Pretty sure that's not going to trigger anyone, Rio Rio. I should get a sombrero. I don't really want a sombrero. But. I appreciate your important input. Mm. I'll put it. That's fun. Is that alright with it? I, mean, well, I can change it. It doesn't really matter. If it's a tie break, so the chances of there being a tie are infinitesimal. So if we go out at that? We might go up higher if you want. Okay. I think you're, you know, the average score is 70 to 70. Mr. Kartoffel, you're here. Natasha Godfrey Ashford says, I love lasagna. My favorite is vegetarian lasagna. Well, not my favorite vegetarian. I prefer meatitarian lasagna. Tastes good. Meow. This makes me want to say squee. My cat's busy. I like that pick, Rachel. Thanks. Rachel just picked Western Kentucky to upset Marquette. I like that pick. She's pretty chalky usually, you know. Yeah, I am. Man, I really need this food. It's good, you have it. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, Washington State. I like lasagna mostly for the sauce and cheese. The noodles are good to keep the two from becoming too soupy. Yeah. Gotta say, this lasagna is just mm. like it hitting me right in the SI, you know. I didn't know I needed it. Hmm? I didn't know I needed it until like biting it and tasting it. Yeah. Mm. 
like almost midnight and we last ate. We got that sandwich. Or you didn't even eat any of it then. I had some of it. It's pretty big. But then at some point I had a Mexican casserole where you didn't have anything. Yes. Mm. Okay. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's really hard to not go to Houston. Mm. Mm. Well, they beat Kentucky, they beat Tennessee. Tennessee's a two seed. Let's do it. I saw Lamar Lecom to you too. Whatever that means. Yanash S. Shroom, welcome. Welcome to talking with those people. Uh, I'm currently about to, I just finished a meal and I go have a health to you by the side. And then after that, I suspect that I will take a couple of gabapentins and a couple of Benadryls and then figure kind of clock out of, of my YouTube job here. It's definitely not a real job. Um, and aim for a ticket on the Sleepy, tri Sleepy Time Express, which I should be able to acquire. Hopefully it's not sold out. Do you know what happened in 1492? I believe Columbus sailed the ocean blue. That's what the rhyme says anyway. Could you write a poem about oatmeal toppings? After so many years of multo meal bottomings, it's nice to finally have some oatmeal toppings. That's my poem. <laughs> Oh, Mr. Kartoffel. The William Afton, hello. I hope you have a wonderful evening. Slash early morning. The sun is too round, and I don't approve. I agree. Water should be square. But the reality is, unfortunately, only um, two thirds of it is square. The, the, the H is. The O's are round. So. You would expect it to be more square than round accordingly. However, obviously, <clears throat> the roundness of the O's must overwhelm the squareness of the H's. Oatmeal toppings, what do you say? Oatmeal toppings, come my way. Oatmeal toppings, you're my hero. Oatmeal toppings, is that a sparrow? I don't think so. I think it's not a bird. It's oatmeal toppings, and that's my word. There's another oatmeal toppings poem for you. 
Oatmeal toppings sounds like um, kind of like a failed pornography actress name. I'm oatmeal toppings. Is that supposed to be sexy? Yeah. What's sexy about oatmeal? It's the toppings part. It's the sexiest part. Yeah, okay. You're hired. <laughs> you certainly are dumb, though. <coughs> okay, it's kind of my sexy name. Oatmeal toppings. No, that's not why, but fine. You know what I mean by toppings. I'm talking about these toppings. Your shoulders? Yeah. Pretty sexy, huh? Sure. Oatmeal toppings. <laughs> Pretty sexy. My friend wants to go in the business as well. She wants to be known as Flanchero because she's Mexican. And you are, I'm like one of the oatmeal people. I'm oatmeal toppings. And she is again, Flanchero. That's not sexy at all. What's sexy than flan? You know, she's talking about her flan. <laughs> you mean her stomach? Yeah. Flan is a naughty Mexican word meaning stomach. Okay, I'll be on top and you know what? Exactly what kind of movies you we make here? You make sexy movies. Actually, we make movies of people having sex. In sexy ways. Not necessarily. <laughs> In ways, yes. Miss Toppings? Yeah. Have you ever seen a man naked before? No, gross. Okay, get out of here. Get out of here, oatmeal toppings. And tell your friend, Flanchero, not to come by either. <laughs> Oatmeal toppings. Yeah, we got that already, oatmeal. <laughs> I like this lady. I like this oatmeal toppings lady. She's funny. I've got a sexy name. My name's Oatmeal Toppings. <laughs> <laughs> That's not a sexy name, oatmeal. All right, well, I'm going to return briefly to the chat, yeah. and then I'm going to wrap this up. Maybe make some couple breakfast here before bread, and then pick a couple pills, go to bread. So, Anyhow, that's going to do it for this evening's live stream event. I hope you've enjoyed it a great deal. And I will see you probably some tomorrow. But I am planning on watching the basketball games tomorrow. So I may be a little more absent than usual. 
I may stream some some while watching games too as possible. But I really probably not that much. So anyway, I love you all. See you tomorrow at some point though, and have a great night.